If, did we extend uh, an invitation, Chairperson, to the, the suspended MM? We did, it's when. That's the confirmation I asked from Shirin. Shirin, can you respond to this? Shirin? Yes, Chairperson, we extended the invitation. I sent it to him personally um, via email and the list from the municipality I got also was that you will be included in the dedication tonight. And then can we find out from the MM, so from the executive mayor, was this invitation extended to him as the committee's request? Uh, yes, Chairperson, we did extend the invitation to the suspended municipal manager. Okay, there's somebody who's busy talking while the meeting is in progress. Can this person mute his or her my microphone, please? And can I plead with all the colleagues that uh, whenever you are not given an opportunity to speak, make sure that you keep your, 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 your mic on, on mute. Agreed? Uh, so I under the circumstances, can. let yeah. me de deal with the apologies. The apologies that I'm having at my disposal uh, is the minister who log uh, to the portfolio committee meeting uh, later, but we're glad that the DM is here. Also, DG Tem DG Temba Fosi whom this matters we are dealing with a, a part of his branch is also in our midst to also welcome all the other senior officials that I can see that are also from the department that are also here in the in the in, in this uh, platform. The apologies that I have like I said the minister is gonna join us a bit later. Uh, also we have an apology from um, Honorable uh, Brink, that's the apology that I'm having at my disposal. And mm -hmm. then, I, yeah, and the chair of the NCOP, he had said he would love to attend the meeting, but I can see there's a, a huge delegation from the NCOP. That means the chairperson of the portfolio committee or of the select committee is with us in spirit. Uh, colleagues, I think then we need to start this meeting. Let's first uh, congratulate you, Executive Mayor, for your recovery following the news reports earlier last month that uh, you tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, I think we should thank God the Almighty because many of others has been less unfortunate. I should think also at the outset of this meeting, colleagues, allow me to register the dismay of this committee at the recent reports of malpractices and improprieties in the OR district municipality. Uh, Yesterday, we also read on the news that um, the Premier of the province of the Eastern Cape had since then written to the President to request that the Special Investigating Unit must look into this, uh, the allegation of the $1.4 in the irregular expenditure in the municipality as identified uh, in the latest Auditor General's report uh, in, with regard to the municipal audit outcomes. I think I need to also say up front that uh, today some of us and other members of the committee we were attending a briefing by the AG on the municipal audit come together with the uh, standing a uh, committee on uh, Auditor General and the standing committee on public accounts. So the AG again has unreservedly flagged this municipality 
AOR Tambo S1, which, which has got serious financial risks. And then uh, we're in this lack of a proper financial governance. So we, 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 we have noted that as a committee. And I must say that report that the AG shared with us today, it has been very devastating and depressing. Uh, as a committee, I must say this upfront, we are more dismayed at the reports of the door-to-door -door COVID-19 awareness campaign, where a supplier is claiming 4.8 million from the OR Tambo district municipalities for services rendered. We, as a committee, were also in possession of the invoices, which has been billing the municipality 3 million on May 21, and a further 1.8 million four days later. We have also heard and seen the media reports that dispute the extent of these services. Some residents who are quoted in the supplier's register of visited homes claim that they have not known anything about the paper set COVID awareness visit. We have also called this meeting today to hear the municipality side of the story as to assure the nation that the COVID-19 response funds are saving their intended purposes. We hear that the municipality is currently investigating the matter, and we as a committee, we are much interested in the details of this investigation. The committee will also appreciate clarity on the circumstances surrounding the suspension of the municipal manager in order to satisfy ourselves that there is justice and that there is no victimization of people who are doing the right thing. Although the outline of the presentation shared with the committee does not allude to the suspension of the MM, nine of the slides that follow also address the matters. I should believe then, as and when the municipality present, they will be able to, to, to address the matter. Also, that is concerning to us as a committee, is that the presentation is also silent on the door-to-door -door awareness campaign matter. This issue is tarnishing the public image of the municipality and is the main reason we call this meeting today in order to afford the municipality the opportunity to clear its name and take into confidence the residents of OR Tambo district that COVID-19 response funds are reaching the vulnerable. Colleagues will all agree with me under that under the current bleak economic outlook our country is, is facing, every rent count. We cannot afford any wastage. The municipality must work with us to restore the public confidence in the stewardship of these scarce public resources that are entrusted in them. Uh, as I'm seeing that I want to check whose mic, there's somebody whose mic is on, which is very disturbing on our part. Muzima Bok, can you mute your mic, please? You are causing such a disruption. So with this few words, colleagues, I want to thank uh, the OR Tambo team led by its executive mayor for honoring this invitation and I'll hand over. I hope as and when executive mayor, you make the presentation, you will be able to also then address the issues that we've picked up as a deficiencies in your presentation. Over to you, executive mayor. Uh, thank you very much, honorable chairperson. Uh, let me start first. Uh, Can you please. go a bit upright, Executive Mayor, so that we can see you? We are only seeing you ahead. Can you see me now, Chairperson? Yes, that's better. Proceed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chairperson. 
let me greet you let me greet you let me greet the members of the portfolio committee uh, all the members that are here let me greet my colleagues from OR Tambo. Let me greet uh, uh, Salga that is represented here. And also greet the deputy minister amongst us, uh, together with the administration that is here. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I will present the report then also simple give a, a, a highlight before i finish on the issues that you have raised i will try and talk to them we are giving here a report by or tambo municipality COVID 19 plan and the expenditure report can you go on a person who is managing the presentation outline. We have an introduction, the background and the context, the institutional arrangement, overview of COVID-19 cases, then municipal plans as per strings, and then conclusion. On the introduction. We have prepared this report for the Parliamentary Committee on Corporate Governance and Traditional Affairs. Then the report will update the committee about the municipal COVID-19 plans and the expenditure incurred in relation to the activities undertaken. It will also give an insight to the institutional arrangement that has been established by the district in coordinating the coordinate COVID-19 mitigation plans. The report will further appraise the committee on the suspension of the municipal manager. Background and context. When there was an outbreak of COVID-19 and the president declared a disaster, as the district municipality, we established a district command council that is chaired by the executive mayor, whereby we select as members of the mayoral committee from uh, BTO, MMC, Gyose, and then MMC Ngongwa, who is chairing water and sanitation, who is the MMC for water and sanitation, then MMC Mjokovane who is the MMC for Community Services and Disaster Management. Then also, we included the Speaker of the Council to that District Command Council because we have the separation of powers. We wanted the flow of information to other honorable members and the legislature as a whole. And the structure is supported by the technical team chat by the municipal manager. So the municipal manager is chairing the, the technical uh, command council where all district managers from various sectoral departments are sitting giving reports there. Under the technical support team, there are various work streams as reflected in the table below. I'm going to talk to that. The two structures convene weekly uh, to produce a report to the province and then it goes to the national uh, command council in other words the technical command council sits on tuesday then the district uh, command council chaired by the executive mayor sit on thursdays but if there are meetings like yesterday we had to sit today friday because of the council meeting that set yesterday. Then each work stream, if we're continuing with the background, each work stream, as reflected above, developed the sector-based plans that were aimed at mitigating the pandemic. And also in that district command council, we have the WIPO part of parties 
sitting in the district command council together with the traditional leaders when we engage on a virtual meeting because that also assists us. Then also the OR Tambo district municipality developed its plans that are her municipal function. The referred plans included are the institutional business continuity plan, the disaster risk business plan, and implementation plan, water and sanitation operation and maintenance plan, the MIG funding reprioritization plan, all activities in relation to the COVID-19 continue to be reported through the district command committee. And this served to strengthen uh, the coordination. For the purpose of this report, each plan will be outlined in terms of its intention. Go to another slide. Then the institutional arrangement. If we're going to look at the institution institutional arrangement. The district municipality activated its dis disaster operations center led by the municipal manager for purposes of coordinating and providing technical support to the district command council that is led by the executive mayor. Task specific intersectoral work streams have been established, structured as economic, business and tourism health, uh, infrastructure, communication, transport, food support and education, water and sanitation, business continuity, municipal basic services, safety and security. And slide four. The overview of COVID-19 cases. As you know, OR Tambo, in its jurisdiction that these local municipalities, the Mshonto local municipality, that is Kumbu and Solo, the total confirmed cases in Mshonto, the confirmed uh, positive cases is 588, and there are 309 recoveries and nine deaths. Then if you go to Musa Hill local municipality, the total confirmed positive cases, 775, recoveries, 251, and nil death. Then Port St. John's local municipality, we have 181 confirmed positive cases, recoveries is 78, and then we had two demises. Uh, you'll remember Port St. John's, it's where it started. It started there in Port St. John's, whereby it started with that um, major uh, funeral. But now the numbers have lowered down. Then going to Nyandeni, Nyandeni has 774 positive confirmed cases, 456 recoveries, 14 deaths. Then for King Sabata Dalingebo, that is our hotspot the King Sabata Dalingebo. The King Sabata Dalingebo has 4,142 confirmed positive cases with 2,533 recoveries and 72 deaths. Indeed, as Chaperson has said that, uh, I'm one of the people who is counted on the recoveries because I tested positive, then I finished my uh, uh, quarantine on the 16th of June. We can go on, but I'm lucky, I'm alive. I'm happy about that. Then also looking at the case analysis as at 6 June, at least I've already highlighted how we are standing with the case, uh, with the COVID-19 cases, the positive cases. We can go on to that slide, you can skip it. Then overview of COVID-19 cases, looking at the new cases that have been registered. 
We have seen that uh, thing was a hill of, let me start with King Sabata Talinja. King Sabata Talinja had 134 cases, then he followed by Inguza Hill, 80 cases, then followed by Mshonto, 30 cases, Nyan Deni, 21 cases, then we had uh, Port St. John's with 16 cases. Then we have 19 cases that we don't know where are they from, those unidentified cases. Then the total of the new cases is 300. So another slide. COVID-19 plans. If we're going to look at the COVID-19, starting with the business continuity. In the business continuity, the focus is involves the provisioning of PPE for the essential services uh, staff, provision of health and hygiene material and sanitizers, installation of the sanitization equipment to buildings, decontamination of municipal buildings, testing of staffs and counselors, as well as provisioning of psychosocial support to the employees and counselors, communication awareness on COVID-19 and ITP and budget compliance sessions. Another slide, please. Then, if we are going to look at the expenditure, uh, the, as on the disaster risk grant can go on. We receive a, a 4.2. Then uh, we had that uh, uh, active those activities whereby we had to do awareness campaigns, IDP uh, and budget road shows. It amounted to that 1.1 million whereby the municipality had to purchase slot on the community radio, video, graphics were created. <laughs> then also we have uh, the summary of the expenditure on that business plan that we made. So that is the summary on the expenditure. Can go to another slide. Water and sanitation operations and maintenance. On water and sanitation, we had to prioritize it so that we revise the infrastructure and so that we get water for the people. Then on water and sanitation, we had to ensure that there was provision of water tanks for temporary supply, ensure that there was continuous supply of water tanks and improvement of maintenance of water supply and sanitation blockages. On water tanks and water cutting, on water cutting services, we had a total of 888 water tanks as at 22 May 2020, whereby some of the water tanks were bought by us as the district municipality, as you can see, the 5,000 litres 57. Then also, we had donation from the Al Madad Foundation, the donation from the Anglo Gold Ashanti, and other water tanks from the Department of Water and Sanitation. And then others were donated by the Department of Cocta, specifically for the rural communities. And we had to struggle with the water cutting, whereby we had to procure the water cutting to assist when the others that were dispatched by the Department of Water and Sanitation, some areas, they were chased away. Then we had to assist in that as the municipality. Another slide. Water grant prioritization. 
We have a list of projects uh, earmarked for refurbishment for functional schemes, equipping borehole spring protection identified as part of COVID-19 budget ring fence and prioritizing to enhance water access to communities for both consumption and hand wash. So you'll see a list of projects that were submitted to for registration in the Department of Treasury. And some of those projects were not registered, whereby National Treasury approved 89 million and we, uh, as the municipality, we prioritize 131 million on its MIG allocation. But we only got 89 million. That was approved by National Treasury. Another slide, please. Another slide, okay. Those are the projects that were reprioritized for MIG funding. So you can see the state of the project. Most of them are in the implementation stage. I cannot read them one by one. Thank you very much. Go to another slide. Then on food support and social security. The OR Tambo District Municipality supplied PPE items to areas affected by COVID-19. For instance, in Majola. In Majola, that's where it started. It was our epicenter as OR Tamb in Port St. John's. So we supplied a 300 by 20 liter water buckets and hand gloves in, 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 in those water buckets. Inside, there were hand gloves, there were jig. Then we had, again, jig or a sanitizer, then a handy endy. Then also six Jojo tents to that area and 300 masks for the communities there, those people who were affected by COVID-19 at the initial stage when the outbreak uh, uh, surfaced in our term. I've said that before I conclude, I will reflect on the invoices that were on the social media. As you, uh, 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 the programs reprioritization, then we saw these uh, invoices on the social media. I had to request the acting municipal manager uh, through writing a letter to him to make a follow up on the authenticity of those invoices that were in the social media. When he gave me the report that the invoices were, uh, were real and that these invoices, they were, in, they were given to the former municipal manager, that is the suspended municipal manager who couldn't agree, that is who couldn't sign in for them to be paid, but rather wrote a letter to the director in the legislative services, uh, director U Mamutseyane, that he, she must give a full detail of, of the report of what is when were these not okay and how did they happen because we had lockdown uh, uh, regulations that prohibited people moving around then the municipal manager couldn't sign uh, those those invoices then i said to the acting municipal manager he must write a letter to the director concerned and find out well, how did this okay amounting to this amount of money and there must be consequence management and he must bring that report to me for me to take the report to the mayoral committee then to 
the cancer. But before uh, that report, because the final date of the submission of the report was yesterday, then there was a council meeting yesterday whereby on the urgent matters of the council, the report was submitted by the speaker that there is a letter he got uh, uh, of the director that is requesting a leave because of the invoices that were in the media space and is requested a leave and the council agreed to investigate uh, 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 that and then give the, 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 the director consent a leave so that the investigation uh, can go on. When I said that uh, uh, the acting municipal manager, because I said the municipal manager must give a report so that I go and table to the council, because I wanted to the municipal manager to 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 be accountable, because those directors are responsible uh, in uh, are in his responsibility. They are accountable to him. When I said he must quickly give me that report, but unfortunately the council had to jump into conclusion, but I'm still going to take that report to the mayoral committee, then finally to the council, because I think I need to do that. So there is an action that is being done on the, on, on, on the invoices that were in the media space, because the council has, has said that an investigation must be done even the office of the executive mayor has returned to the acting municipal manager to take an action so that investigation must be done in everything that deals with uh, the COVID-19 because we have said that if any director is deviating from the service delivery budget and implementation plan that was submitted to council, you can change that you need to go to the council. Hence, we have said that each and every department, if there are savings in the department, savings in the sense that in the office, there were mayoral imbusers, but those mayoral imbusers, they are no longer to okay. So you can change those plans, but through a council resolution, all those plans, they should first go to the council and you should show that you had this money budgeted for. So an investigation to these ones they, that were done without a council resolution or proper procedures that are being investigated. I think we'll appraise the portfolio committee about that report. Then lastly, if I can tag on, 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 on the suspension of the municipal manager. We didn't submit a report, uh, honorable members or the members of the portfolio committee on the suspension of the municipal managers because that issue is at court, it's it, it, it subjudicate, but it has occurred. We're looking at the unprocedural uh, way of doing it and also this subject case. So we're not going to, to we're requesting that we be excused in making a report or, 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 or on the suspension so that we don't jeopardize or we influence uh, 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 the case at court. Uh, I think those are the issues that we're going to raise. But I want to say to this, Portfolio Committee that oh, our Tambo District Municipality in the issue of COVID-19 is becoming the uh, hotspot and it is KSD and epicenter in the province now because numbers are escalating every day. Inequalities and lack of infrastructure had exposed the communities of our Tambo region and the COVID-19 will impact more on the financial status of the municipality due to its rural nature and poverty. And the pandemic had also in, impacted on the grant expenditure 
because uh, when we had those lockdown regulation, level five, level four, no work was being done. It had an influence. I think I can stop that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Executive Mayor. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, those are the members of the delegation from OR Tambo. Allow the members to ask questions. Then if there are matters that you feel you need to respond and bring in um, some additional info, you'll do that in the question and answer session. So we, we can I see the show of hands of members of the portfolio committee and the members of the select committee, the colleagues who wants to ask questions. Uh, remember, when you speak, uh, you must put your camera on and make sure that you are visible so that uh, because we are live from the parliamentary channel, yes. So that's the rule. Can I see colleagues who want to interact with the presentation? Baba. Opperman. Opperman. Reza. Kalipi. Korevald. Kalipi. Hussein. Hussein. Who else? Direko. Mkalipi. Direko. Mkalipi, I've long noted you long ago, my colleague. Honorable. Yes. It's Hadewe. Hadewe, and who else? Uh, can I, are we all? Hello. From, yes, who's there? Oh. It's Chair. I, I serve in the NCOP as you know, but I do not serve in I, I do not sit in the COCTA select committee. But Was my, my interest say again, Who's the colleague? Eh? It's Mlindi Nana from the NCOP. Okay. Honorable Mlindi. Nana. Thanks, Chair. Okay, noted. I've noted you, Honorable Mbumza. I've noted you, Honorable Mbumza. Who else? Okay. okay. So the colleagues from the NCOP are all covered. Uh, Karim Fesser, please. Fesser, Honorable Fesser. Uh, Honorable Zandamela, you are fine, and Honorable Mutamai. Okay. Honorable So, are you okay? Honorable So. Okay, let's proceed in that order. Honorable So. Mamkis. Yes, Chair. Chairperson, let me thank you, Chairperson. Let me welcome the presentation from the Executive Mayor of our term. The presentation is very clear and uh, it's fruitful, Chair, as the Mayor was, pre uh, was presented. But Chairperson, thank you, Executive Mayor. But Chairperson, I have a question to the executive mayor. Uh, executive mayor, there was a, a, a cutting edge, I think um, a month ago, who was talking with the people of Enyande and Nilibote. <clears throat> Those people, they don't have water. As you are planning for the, your, 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 your district municipality uh, about the the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, is the people or community of Libot uh, being covered about the water because they don't have water, as you know, Mayor. 
we are staying under the regulation in South Africa that says every time and again people they must wash their hands. What I, I, I want to know, or the mayor must assuring the commies, what will happen to the people of Nandane about the water? As uh, in this, uh, 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 and also, Chair, the, 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 the executive mayor must be specific about their priority. Because the executive mayor talk about the prioritizing uh, what they are doing in the uh, uh, municipality. They are prioritizing the plans about the, about the people of um, the municipality of um, uh, or Tambo uh, municipality. I think the, the executive mayor must be specific. Which areas? Because if, when I was listening to the executive mayor, it was not specific about areas. Which areas that you are prioritizing as a municipality? And uh, as I'm as I'm saying, as I'm saying, uh, as I'm saying, as I'm saying, um, uh, there is this community of Liberty. I want you to know, in this priority that you are prioritizing, is the people of Liberty catered for in your priority? And if they are catered for, how many tanks? Or oh, church or tanks, water tanks that we have been uh, delivered to the, to this community as a community that is struggling about water. There at Liberty, uh, Chairperson, uh, I, I must stop there. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the Mayor, I need the question. The question is two: the the the, the people of Liberty, they are catered for in in this priority things on. How many total tanks or tank water tanks that are being there are sent there in the bottle? Three, I want the mayor, please be specific about the areas that you are prioritizing and what are you delivered to them, those areas that you are prioritizing about the plans of COVID-19 and, and the, so that those will we, we know that those communities, they must be adhered about the regulation because you are prioritizing them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Kaba. Uh, the next speaker is Honorable uh, Oberman. Honorable Oberman. Thank you, Chairperson. My connectivity is very bad. Can I have permission to switch off my camera? Show your face first, then you're going to switch it off. My face is there, Chairperson. Oh, yes, you can proceed now. Proceed. I'd like to know this morning we had the AG reporting on the $1.4 in irregular expenditure. I want to know what were the main contributors to this and are you investigating the irregular expenditure? If not, why not? Then I want to know, did you pay 10.3 million to Sina Sonke construction for the Mkanduli bulk sewer works, though no work was done? And did you pay 9.9 .9 million to Kualo construction for the same sewerage works and no work has been done. Is this true? Then regarding the water tankering, have you paid for Netics tanks, one million to deliver tanks? And have that tanks been delivered? If not, why not? And did you pay Valatone 2.5 million to deliver water tanks? And has those tanks been delivered yet? Then I'd like to know, is it true that you paid three million to Patilis Sweet Training Institution on the 21st of May and 1.8 million on the 26th of May for that door-to-door -door campaign? If yes, who signed off on this? So who is liable? And did the campaign indeed take place? Then I'd like to know, is it true that the CFO who refused to sign off on the illegal payments 
has hired bodyguards now because he fears for his life. Then I want to know, is it true that you paid Amatole Water 133.9 million for unexplained advance payments without any work being done? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Oberman. Honorable Chazam. No, thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, I mean, Steve Chair, the municipality, there will be uh, there will be a, a load shedding, Chair, from from seven o'clock to ten o'clock today. So I might have to to switch off my 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 camera uh, in the process because there will be there will be darkness. But nevertheless, Chair, I want to ask, I want to appreciate the fact that, let's let's start there. I want to appreciate the fact that there is a, an investigation by the SIU in terms of the irregular expenditure of 1.4 billion in this municipality. Because uh, I do not believe that the municipality have the capacity to investigate, even though they have in-house uh, investigation, in, in investigating uh, capacity, uh, even though there is, uh, there is MPEX there. But we have been asking as a committee, what is the capacity of the MPEX to, to raise this issue as it, to preempt, to preempt these issues as in when, as, as in when, and as, as, as before they happen. Uh, and we have not had any, any positive responses uh, in terms of that, and I, I, I'm happy that the minister is here to look at these things uh, and see them for what they are. Secondly, Chairperson, is, 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 is what is ludicrous about this um, presentation is the fact that we can get food support and social security, uh, where the mayor is mentioning a uh, jig sanitizer and handy and 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 handy handy without mentioning food. Surely, surely in this report, there is no food. Uh, where is the food? Which, which, which food support did you distribute exactly? And where did you, did you uh, distribute? In which areas did you distribute food, food parcels? Uh, because you are saying in your, in your, in your presentation that uh, at the latter stage of the presentation, you are saying that uh, uh, your, 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 your municipality is, 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 is poor, and there is inequalities there, and yet you are not saying anything about the, the, the food support. Nothing that you are saying. You are talking about G, uh, uh, handy endies and things like that, which is quite ludicrous, uh, Chairperson of the committee. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the third one, uh, uh, Chairperson, I want to ask the, the mayor: Did you uh, did you not act in haste? To suspend the MM. Uh, I'm asking this question in earnest, uh, Chairperson, because the committee does not take sides here. We 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 ask questions based on 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 on, on clarity that we seek as a committee. Uh, did you not act hastily uh, to suspend the the, the municipal manage? Did you follow the 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 correct uh, procedures as prescribed in the Municipal Systems Act read together with the Municipal Financial Management Act for suspending the, an accounting of, officer accused of financial misconduct. Did you follow uh, uh, a due process in there? Uh, number two, the door-to-door, -door, the chairperson has, 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 has alluded to that. Number, 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 number three is the fact that uh, I want to know if, if you have a forensic report with regards to a uh, 12 million that was paid to Ruakon for supply of material to the Signal Hill in Mtat, which remains to date undelivered, where payments proceed, pro, 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 processes and company didn't receive re, didn't receive received payments. And uh, Chair, uh, it's, a cause, it's a cause for concern that we, that uh, the, the, there's, there's 100 deaths in the municipality. Uh, 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 and with, with King Sabata Tabulingebo having 72, 
And the mayor having said in the committee that he has stayed safe and he has managed to, to, to stay afloat. And I want to ask this, uh, to tease the question in terms of what resources did the mayor have in his disposal vis-a-vis -vis the poor communities that uh, do not necessarily have uh, the, 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 the proper shelter or the proper places to quarantine or the proper uh, uh, potable water and, and all those resources that uh, the mayor has. Uh, what, 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 what did you do to stay afloat vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the communities? And, and how, has, how have you, how, what are you going to do to, 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 to make sure that your, 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 your community members uh, stay as afloat as you did? Uh, thanks to the ancestors, your ancestors, for for for, for raising you from from that uh, uh, position. And uh, the other one, chair, did you have, uh, Mayor, a plan to prioritize poor communities to ensure that new infrastructure? Because you spoke about uh, old infrastructure being maintained in the presentation. That new infrastructure is built new uh, in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the bridges that are needed in in, uh, in uh, MP, MP any uh, community village. Uh, did, you, did you make sure, to, did you, uh, you have that uh, a plan in place so that they can access uh, water, proper water? What are the plans and how much is dedicated for this purpose? And uh, the other one, Chair, relates to, uh, did you pay uh, unexplained advance payments uh, with regards to the bulk sewer uh, to Amatola municipality? The 28 million, the 91 million, the 14 million. What were they paid? What, what, what was the, the municipality paid for? That's that's another question, Chair. And uh, the other ones have been uh, covered by, by Honorable uh, Opperman. And if I jump anyone, Chair, I'll come back later on. Hope, hope that there, will, there won't be a uh, load shedding. Thank you. Uh, uh, I hope the uh, is fully charged, Honorable Claire. No, it I'm, is. I'm not seeing your picture, but uh, we'll hear your voice. Uh, Honorable Kronivar. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson, um, I want to start off to ask. Honorable, ask just mute your microphone, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, you're muted. Honorable Chairperson, Chairperson, I want to start off to say, of to ask. You. I think we've got a delay. Can I proceed, Chair? Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, okay, I want to start off um, by asking the municipality in terms of local government legislation. Um, their website are not updated. It's updated last 2015-2016 uh, financial year. I actually went and tried to see if I can get um, some of their reports, but I couldn't because it's not available on the website. Then, Honourable Chairperson, the mayor alluded to say that um, as soon as she uh, found out on social media about all of these invoices, she asked um, and write a letter to ask if it's true or not. Um, then they came back, they came back and um, after can I say, a day or what, the municipal manager was suspended. But yet to the committee, she states that there is no report um, that she can give in terms of those payments. Um, and that that report will come still. 
The question is, um, why did she then suspend the municipal manager if there were no report? Um, if I can find out. And then in terms of regulation number 43291, um, point six points, uh, um, section 6.7.4F, it says that all emergency procurement that has been done through lockdown must be tabled at the first council sitting. She also alluded to say that they had yesterday a council uh, sitting. So I want to find out, was this procurement tabled um, at this council meeting? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Vats. Honorable Mkalipi, the floor is yours. Honorable Ucha. Yes, proceed. Your turn. That's your turn. Huh? It's you. It's me, yes. yes Thank you. Proceed. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, I'm struggling with the network, ne? and uh, I must also mention the Chair, Uguti, people are watching in 408, and the Ngoba song, Gela said that Teta is closer. In Tony City is long, Ngoba Luda, but I say our tambo. Selling is closer, Umalunji. So, get a person, I'm going to use both my closer and my English because we are trouble. Because our people right there in the Eastern Cape of Nuguzo, Mr. Tangaluda. The Abonga, the Abuela Chaperson Gakulu, a mayor. If Una opened and boozela after your presentation, which is not very clear in terms of the suspension of the MM. Sishi Lula threw our chairperson to say that, why in your presentation the suspension of the MM is not mentioned? So therefore, we need you to come very clean and tell this committee, what are the reasons of the EMM uh, for suspension? Secondly, Mayor, if I may ask yesterday, there was a sitting, the council sitting, and the EFF put a motion that proposed that the director, a director of legislative service, Uti Mtelani, must be suspended. So therefore, we were hoping as the EFF that you are going to uh, take that call because you have suspended the, the MM of which we don't know who, what are the reasons. But when we are saying that, uh, please suspend the director of uh, legislative services on the basis that you can't justify this three million on door to door. Therefore, the council took a decision that we need to get a clarity from now that uh, the suspension is not going to take place rather than the director must be given a leave. And I'm not sure, Chairperson, if that uh, director is here with us. I think I heard when you were just introducing people from Or Tambo, I heard her name that is part and parcel of this delegation. So, if leave, leave and why is, 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 is also uh, 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 given that leave? If eighty ume and Gugusho Waka up is cutting the presentation, Utema Abetola go social media eh, about this three million or whatever million Lenny who party leads with training institutions or Palingwadi. And this Funugusho Uti, this is a very serious concern to this committee. Uti Jenga Mayor was a Palingwadi, Mwati, Ezo figure, Gunyago Zayo, a office instead of calling that person. Who is reporting under you? Because this is a very serious matter of door to door. So therefore, this party leads with training institutions. And why did you opt to use a company? If the awareness was that a, a program of a municipality that was very important, of which all of us, we agree that COVID-19, our people, they must know about this COVID-19 because it's a new disease that our people must also be engaged and told how to keep safe. So why you didn't 
hire ama volunteers from a or tambo. Abantu benga pangeli bekele makaya. Uba nigi mali anda umaspala uguzubao empowerishe because ngezikati uhamba usha uto to do. Unika bantu when you are going to conscientize people about this COVID. At the same time we are creating opportunities for the unemployed people of our tambo. So why the decision was taken by this director of legislative services to, to, to hire a company, one company, and give him such a lot of money. That is one. So, you always on the news, not uh, but badly. So, one of, 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 of things that were also said about your municipality is 170 million that were paid for bulk water services, which didn't take place. So is any investigation that has taken place to that regard? Eomamu Mamki is the one who spoke firstly here, also alluded to the fact that Kate Gukona even Nizal Gwaza Bandaba Dala Bekala Bet Abawaza Mans in that particular place. So Lama investigation we are wenza in Jongum Kandu and then Ushilo no Kombri to Tesa Lauguti. Do you have a capacity? Do you have a capacity to investigate yourself? Or did you ask the national to intervene if you want to keep this kind of corruption? Um Laoguti level five. Uh Utenge Ama PPEs on level four, Utenga Ma PPEs. 132,000. But to level 5, would take my PPEs, 1.1 million. So therefore, I was paying to the mayor, it is not justified. Where is the logic here? Go back level level 5, would take my land, my PPEs that costed 1.1 million. Whereas, abandabaningi, bashele makai, only few people who are essential workers who are reporting at work. But when more people are reporting at work at level 4. So you think I'm a PPE is 132,000. So where is the logic on that one? There are other tanks that other colleagues spoke about, Mayor. Uh, why or how long are you intended to have this 888 water tanks uh, as of every month by a matrix of 43? And how much is the municipality paying per month for these 888 water tanks? And who are the owners of these water tanks? Ushilo, one of the committee members here, to say that today we receive a report from the AG, and it is not a good report about our tambo. And it is not even shocking because, we, as I'm saying, that you are always on, on the news, but not with good news, but you are always on the news badly. So, Aukaze Uzu Tole, or Gate Waxena Uktola, if Wakwai Tola. He qualified findings, even even in 2018-2019. So therefore, Spunu was because we're talking about millions and billions that can assist our people on the ground. Usenige Nayenza in investigation if if it is serious about fighting corruption, because you can't be saying the HK saying to you, "Uko na undo nage leglo maspal and the band lebele kube kali lebeta ba watu la mans aba itole nzi zagala zab and then it counts ali kubege as usual as if have you issued an investigation on those things that were said by the AG before? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Honorable Mukali. Honorable Usain. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, may I just make one comment before I raise uh, a few things, Chairperson? You know, uh, Chair, in, in one of the addresses uh, uh, to the country, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced the 500 billion rand uh, COVID relief package. And if I recall at the time when he made that announcement, I think that there was a general mood in the country where people were, were quite grateful that under such difficult economic circumstances that the president was still able to go and find some 500 billion rand to provide COVID relief support uh, to South Africa. And a large part of that money was 
directed towards municipalities for COVID relief efforts, for mitigating the spread of the virus and so on. But at the same time, I think that when that announcement was made, Chairperson, I think that there was also a level of skepticism in the country that a lot of that money is not going to reach the, the intended beneficiaries in the way that it was originally intended. And when you listen to what is going on in the Or Tambo municipality, you can understand why there was skepticism in the country at this at, at the same time. So whilst people were grateful, there was this expectation that as we proceed in the weeks and the months ahead, uh, moving into other stages of the lockdown, that more and more of these type of incidents will start emerging on incidents and allegations of corruption, um, uh, especially when it comes to supply chain management and tendering processes. It's really troubling, Chairperson, to listen to what's actually going on in Or Tambo municipality. And I think they've been in the media, as one of our honorable members have mentioned, for all the wrong reasons of recent. I find it quite fascinating that the mayor, I think that she was well aware that she was coming to the portfolio committee uh, to particularly uh, specifically deal with this issue around the 4.8 million rand uh, that was planned to be spent. And I'd like to hear whether it, it, there is a hold on that money or whether it's actually still spent um, on, on the door to door campaign. And if you if you work it out, uh, the 4.8 million rand for 6,800 people, it works out to about 750 rand per person just on a door to door campaign. So every person that gets spoken to it cost the municipality 750 rand. But this, this is just one of the incidents, and there's been some reference to the 1.4 billion rand um, uh, irregular expenditure that the AG had mentioned today in another portfolio committee meeting. And then there's other allegations of, of uh, uh, financial irregularities in this municipality, the, the 168 uh, million rand that was... Uh, apparently uh, given an advance payments to, to companies, which I think that we must still get an answer from from the uh, from um, the, the suspended MM. And I hope, Chairperson, that you will give him an opportunity to maybe give his version of the story of what's actually going on. But, Madam Mayor, may I just say to you, and if I can put it to you as straightforward as I can, the leadership of that of your municipality is an embarrassment to the people of South Africa when you listen to what's going on in this municipality. And not by any stretch of anyone's imagination can we walk away with a sense of confidence that you or your leadership of that municipality is doing what they expect to do to try and address uh, the very difficult situation that we find ourselves in. The people in your municipality have put their hope in your hands. And I'd like to hear from you, uh, Madam Mayor, because in your presentation that you provided to us, you deliberately left out a lot of the detail. And I'm saying deliberately because I think that you're aware that we were going to raise the issue about the 4.8 million rand for the door-to-door -door campaign, but you left that out of your out of your report. You also left out a lot of the detail around the expenditure. You've given us globular figures of how much was spent on certain things, like 957,000 rand for for uh, um, non-touch uh, thermometers, but you don't tell us how many uh, you actually bought with that money. And I'd really like to get that detail from you so that we can conduct the oversight that's required. You might have bought only a hundred of them. So you have an opportunity to maybe address those type of issues that's in those two specific slides where you refer to the PPEs. Incidentally, you spent 780,000, 1.1 million, and a further 132,000 on, on personal protective equipment. But you don't tell us what you bought. Uh, you know, I, given what's going on with the door-to-door -door campaign, I want to accuse you of only buying 100 uh, uh, hand sanitizers and it's an opportunity for you to at least give us the detail so that we can understand that your municipality has received value for the money that you've spent, money that you've received from National Treasury as well, from part of that 500 billion rand that the president was talking about. And then, of course, the sanitizers that you spent 1.2 million rand for um, and a fumigation booth. Is that a single fumigation booth for 841,000? or a number of them, if you can please provide that information to us. You, you spent a further 1.3 million in your municipality to test for the testing of staff. I'd like you to give us the detail of how many staff were actually tested for a 1.3 million rand, because when I look at the report and I look at 
the track record of your municipality, it seems to me that the leadership of your municipality have been feeding off the trough like, like no man's business, if you can put it that way. That this was an opportunity for people in your municipality to line their pockets at the expense of poor people in, in, in that municipality who actually had a sense of hope that, that you and the leadership of your municipality would have at least saved their lives. But instead, I think that many, many of them are saving their pockets. So I want to ask you, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, a very direct question. You are the political leader in that municipality. That municipality, your municipality is an embarrassment. And what responsibility are you going to take personally for what's actually going on there? And give this portfolio committee and the rest of the country the assurance that you are genuinely serious about turning the situation around and putting the crooks in jail, not in council. Because I'm sure that you know who the crooks are in that municipality. You know who the ones are who are getting money from that from those tenders. It can't be that you don't know. Because the levels of corruption in that municipality are, are, are reaching such proportions that it's more than just an embarrassment and people are getting away with it. And that money is intended to actually save the lives of those people. So I'd like to hear from you and ask answer a very direct question. Are you aware of any councillor any official, any senior official in the department, in your municipality, or, or even any politician who have directly benefited uh, from tenders in your municipality. And it's an opportunity for you to tell us if you know about it and whether or not you are going to report it. If you, if you choose not to mention their names on, on this occasion, I can understand that. But at least give us the assurance that if you know that you will report it and you will take action so that we will get the confidence that there is a mayor there in charge who means business. And I want to give credit to the MEC for writing to the president to say, I can't take this nonsense any longer. Send in the SIU to, to investigate. That's the kind of leadership that we want to be able to see. And so I'm asking you to reciprocate the same level of, of leadership, because if the MEC in the province can write to the president, what are you doing as the mayor to fix this? You can't leave it to the MEC to, de to deal with it. I would have expected you as the mayor to be the first one to write, to go to the police to say, something's wrong in my municipality and I want you to, to deal with it. But when you speak today, and when I listen to you very carefully, you expressed absolutely no dissatisfaction about what's going on there. You come to the portfolio committee just because it's another meeting that you actually come to, just to give a simple report and then you will go away. And tomorrow all is forgotten. But you're the political leader. Your political party and the voters in your municipality have put you in charge in the hope that you're going to change their lives around. But from what I've heard from you thus far, I don't get the impression that you're actually doing anything to fix that problem. And for as long as those problems are not fixed in that municipality, you become a part of it. Unless, of course, you can give us the assurance that you're genuinely committed to turning that situation around. And I want to really give you the opportunity to at least make a statement in that regard. I want to ask one question, Chairperson, one additional question, Chairperson, from the mayor. There is a requirement that uh, all COVID-19 expenditure be reported to the municipality as well as to National Treasury. And if the mayor can please confirm whether or not uh, all of that expenditure has been reported to the council as well as the uh, as well as National Treasury. Um, the last uh, question, Chairperson, I want to put to the mayor is in relation to this company called Patal Lizwe Training Institute. And I want to ask the mayor if she is aware of who in your municipality has a direct linkage with this company. Because 4.8 million rand uh, uh, for training in that regard, I tell you what, no sane human being in our country will believe that that is genuine fruitful expenditure. So I'm sure you must know who, that, who they are linked to and which councillor or official is actually benefiting from that company. And is this the first occasion that that company has received tenders from, from your municipality? And given the fact that you've been now conducting this investigation against that company, I take it that you will make every effort to make sure that those people who attempted to try and defraud your municipality will not get any other tenders from your municipality going forward. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Honorable Hussein. Honorable Direko. Honorable Direko. Can I pass it to come to Honorable Adewe? Honorable Adewe? I'm back, Chair. Oh, you're back? 
Honorable Direct. Uh, thank you, Chair, for, for the opportunity. Uh, the Executive Mayor, your municipality is always on the news, but for the wrong reasons. What is the reaction of the municipality on this matter? How are you planning to resolve the matter? And now my, my question, Chair, is on the 1.4 billion on irregular expenditure. How did the municipality reach such a huge amount on irregular expenditure? What is the reaction of the municipality? And what is it that you are doing? Do you have a financial recovery plan in place? And if you don't, why you don't have it? If you have it, what have you done so far? And then on the 4.2 million on COVID uh, expenditure, can you please break down the, the expenditure so that at least it, could be, it should be fully detailed? For instance, on 1.2 million that we have spent on sanitizers, how much did it cost the municipality for each item? And how many did you 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 purchase? And who are the beneficiaries of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the sanitizers? So in each and every expenditure on that COVID, can you please at least break it down so that we can understand how how did you spend it? And lastly, Chair. I would also like to know to understand if they were they were using the uh, treasury regulations on te in terms of uh, COVID uh, nineteen ex uh, uh, procurement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you so much, Honourable Director. Honourable Hadewe. Uh, th thank you, thank you, Honourable Chair. Um, in Western Cape, we are affected by a cold front, and the, it has already started raining hard, Chair. Uh, so my signal might cut from time to time, and we are expecting load shedding any time from now. It was meant to start at seven. So for the smooth transition of my uh, questions, I will uh, uh, switch off my video. But this is me, Chair. I'm alive and kicking. Um, Thank you, Honourable Chair. First and foremost, let, let us thank God the Almighty that the Executive Mayor, uh, 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 she is counted amongst the COVID-19 survivors. Uh, indeed, Mama Siabonga, Mama Uimbogod. As you correctly stated, Honourable Chair, earlier today um, at, at 9.30, uh, we had an opportunity to receive a, a report from the Auditor General. And interestingly enough, that report was titled Not Much to Go Around, Yet Not the Right Hands at the Till. Now, this speaks to the level and the capacity of people that were deployed in, in, in municipalities. Hence, AG opted for this title that Yet Not the Right Hands at, at the Till. The AG Honorable Chair. Uh, he further indicated that the OR Tambo District Municipality is leading currently on irregular expenditure. Uh, he also stated that, sadly so, Chair, that the practice has not changed. If I were to put it in Costa, Kwavula's book, uh, and also the entire province in Eastern Cape, uh, painfully so, the Auditor General stated that there is high level of instability when it comes to key positions in the entire Eastern Cape municipalities. Now, in OR Tambo in, uh, in particular, the AG stated that the practice, it is tolerated, the practice of non-compliance, meaning uh, yet we have a leadership democratically elected by the people of Oatambo to ensure that they fulfill their needs in terms of service delivery. But when it comes to uh, a non-compliance, Wamakitas began. And now these issues relate to water and sanitation infrastructure. Uh, uh, this is a very sad state of affairs, Honorable Chair, given the fact that mm -hmm municipality is named after one of our own stalwart, the struggle icon, Oliver Reginald Tambo. Over and above that, this very same municipality, we have launched a district development model. This municipality is supposed to be a, a shining light leading by example on how to do things right. 
Yet we are told they are leading in terms of irregular expenditure. Now the question that I'd like to get an understanding over and above the SIU investigation, has this municipality taken any initiative to investigate the 1.4 billion of irregular expenditure as identified by the Auditor General? If yes, give us the latest uh, details in this matter. If not, why not? We, 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 we really want to get to the bottom of this. Now, Chair, let me deal with the issue of, of, of the, the, the suspension. And this is the issue that has been making headlines. Uh, I take your point, um, Executive Met, Met, Mayor, that this matter is judicate. Fair enough, we are not going to deal with the merits and the demerits of the case. However, I'd like to deal with issues of rationality. Now, uh, Honorable Chair, the measure of rationality in this regard is procedural fairness. Now, I'd like to draw your attention uh, uh, to the Municipal Systems Act regulation, uh, Schedule 2, that governs uh, disciplinary code and procedures of senior managers. And if you allow me, I will read. It states the following. If a senior manager is alleged to have committed misconduct, the Municipal Council must institute disciplinary proceedings in accordance with the disciplinary code of this schedule two. Over and above that, it must be done in accordance with the good code of practice provided for in schedule eight of the Labor Relations Act of 1995, Act 90, uh, number 66 of 95. The Act further states, Chair, that the principle of natural justice and fairness must, must be adhered to at all times, notwithstanding criminal or civil action having been instituted. Now, when you talk about uh, uh, rule of natural justice, Chair, the rule of how the alteram patem applies, that no one should be condemned and heard. You must listen to the other side. Now, the question that I would like to pose to the uh, uh, executive mayor, please detail to us uh, step by step the procedural uh, uh, steps that the municipality took in suspending the municipal manager and what were the cause that led to the suspension of the municipal manager. I'm raising this uh, because section five is very clear that any allegation of misconduct brought against the senior manager must be tabled within the municipal council within seven days. And what is very clear and explicit is that you cannot suspend the municipal manager or any senior official without first giving him an opportunity to make representation. Once he or she has made the representation, you further uh, 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 afford yourself as the municipal council an opportunity to interact with the representation and weigh the, uh, uh, the balance of probabilities. And then only then you can arrive at the decision to suspend the municipal manager. I'm stating this fact so that when you get a, 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 a response, we need to measure in terms of rationality whether or not a procedural fairness was applied in dealing with this matter. We are all innocent until proven guilty before the court of law. So we cannot afford a situation whereby others will be given a leave and others will be suspended. Yet there are those who have signed on the dotted line this uh, uh, invoices, the handwritten invoice chair to the amount of 4.5 billion, a million. Hence I'm saying Guavula's book, where else have you seen an invoice of 4.5 a uh, five million uh, handwritten chair. We need to get to the bottom of, of this matter chain. So for now, honorable chair, uh, 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 those are my two cents contribution in relation to, to, to the suspension of, of, of the municipal manager. Now, moving right along, uh, I would like to ask you the last question. If the executive mayor uh, will give us the summary of the expenditure of the municipality in respect to the food support and social security, work stream. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll come back on the second round if the need arises. Thank you.
Thank you, Honorable Adebe. Honorable Mpumza. Honorable Mpumza. The platform is yours, but uh, Ricky, can hear you. We, we can hear you, Honorable Mpumsa. Can I skip you? Then you can. Hear you, Honorable Mpumza. Can you try a better location? Try it a better location. Can you hear you, Honorable Mpumza? Try a better location. I can see your picture, but the sound that is coming out of your system, we can't even hear what you are saying. Can is you it? try for the last time? Try it. Okay. Yes, that's better. Proceed. Uh, uh, um, thank you very much, Chairperson and the Honourable Members. Uh, in the first mayor, my question, my first question, Mayor, relates to the cutting edge over uh, Yandin, where there was a reflection that uh, the people of Mpindwin do not have access uh, to services. In other words, they are very isolated. And uh, they could not, they don't have a bridge. Now, in your plans that you just presented, uh, the people of Mpindwini are accommodated in the provisioning of water and uh, the access roads. That is my the second question, Mayor, is that uh, the Municipal Finance Management Act. Uh, its architecture makes a provision for a rigorous uh, reporting and accurate reporting, as well as it makes provision for the Section 71 reports on a monthly basis. Now, given the outcome of an irregular expenditure of 1.4 billion, my question is. Are the governance structures and is the monitoring and oversight and accountability as required by the provision of Section 71 report actually being applied in your municipality? Then, how come that we have been received in such Section 78 report that should give you an area in relation to? This would be a regular expenditure that would actually arise at the end of the outcome of the auditor general. Why is it that uh, the municipality, in terms of national management, is not actually applying effectively Section 71 reports to manage your expenditure and also to give you warning that perhaps there is deviation? or you are actually now uh, implementing outside the adopted play of the municipality. Uh, also, Chair, one issue that relates to the fact that you, there is this, what is the media, uh, wherein you actually won, you have paid uh, Amatola water up front, a large sum of money, I don't know, it's 93 million. And uh, I understand that uh, the municipality has an MOU with uh, Amatola Water as an implementing agent. Mayor, we are interested to know 
that uh, what are the timelines because the indication is that you are using umatola water for your RPD, your regional water supply, bulk water supply. Now, Mamatola water is your implementing agent. What is the character and the nature of this MOU? Why Amatola water is it the only service provider? At the time when you were still the chief whip, now you are the mayor, that Amatola water is the sole implementing agent. And what are timelines in the MOU and uh, how often do you review as a municipality the status of this implementing agent of the Amatola water and if indeed Amatola water is an implementing agent is Amatola water believe any of the municipality pay Amatola water uh, what is the nature of this uh, where is the supply chain management in this particular issue around this issue of Amatola water? My last share would relate to the fact that uh, uh, the invoice that was paid, written, handwritten, is very strange. Handwritten invoice, invoicing the municipality, and it was paid for a work not done. And this is alleged to be coming from the director, whether legal service or what is this, the, from the legislative side of the municipality. Now, with this upfront payment and those that have been out of this invoice by these service providers that have been paid upfront, having not done the work, where is the CFO in all of this picture? Who is authorizing this? Does the municipality have a CFO? Does the CFO have relevant requisite skills? Why there is a leak in the municipality if there is a CFO? Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Mpumza. Honorable um, Lindinana. I, Ch Chairperson, thanks, thanks very much. Uh, you see the difficulty, and, 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 and I must thank you for allowing me from the SOP to, to contribute in this debate. Uh, the difficulty, Chair, when you, you are asked to speak at the tail end of proceedings, your colleagues mu you know, must have covered most of what you wanted to say. But but you know you as as, as <laughs> a, a politician navigate. Of course, of course, you must make a plan, chair. Yes. Chair, the first issue I can't agree more with uh, Honorable Hadeb. Uh, that you know, the mayor of Wartambo has gone through a lot in in the past in the past few months, and and I'm so pleased that she she is one of the survivors. And, and a testimony that indeed COVID-19 can be defeated. And I think as the committee to you, Chair, at some point we need to applaud her uh, for having shown uh, heroism uh, to, to defeat this, uh, this, this pandemic. We have done Chair, that in the, when we well, begin the meeting, you were not yet here. I'm we sorry, Chair. I'm telling you very in much. I'm sorry, I wasn't remarks. here. Yes. I'm sorry, Sha I wasn't here. What? I also had Honorable Kaiser referring to the chairperson. Oh, awesome, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Thank I missed you. it. I battled sure. to connect. Now, sure. Chair, there, there's a few issues that uh, my colleagues have, have raised, and one of those is the director having asked for leave or having been given leave. And the second issue is the suspension of the municipal manager. And, and the third issue is the people that I have spoken to uh, about the 4 million rand invoice. And the last issue is, is the issue of the water tanks. Chair, on, on the issue of, of the director who was asked to take leave, I would want to submit to this to this meeting 
that in fact there was a motion to 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 suspend the director of legislative services but that motion was disrupted and bullied by a certain portion of councillors who were not in agreement with the suspension of of the director as a result a, a compromise was reached or something was a a a a, 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 a situation was bulldozed that instead of her being suspended, she should rather be given leave. Now, sir, you will know as much as I do what, what I mean, where the difference lies between a person who's suspended and a person who's given leave. There are restrictive measures when you are being suspended, and when you are given leave, there is less restrictive measures. Now, chair, I want I want the mayor to come. I, I want the mayor to comment on this. It was a matter in council, but unfortunately, it has come to my attention. And, and Chair, I'm the constituency leader of the DA in Oartambo. So I do get some, of this, some of, this info, of this information. And therefore, I would want the mayor to comment on it. That's the first issue. The second issue, Chair, uh, revolves around the situation of the municipal manager. Honorable Kanya, I just missed his surname. Honorable Kanya, I think Clement or something. He he did he did he, he did speak to the suspension of the municipal manager. Now, what really boggles my mind, Chair, from where I'm sitting, the DA in OR Tambo for the past two years has been raising red flags about alleged corrupt activities of the MM. But because it was convenient for the ANC caucus in Ortambo, they closed ranks behind uh, mm -hmm. the MM. Now, Chair, after beans have been spilled, all of a sudden, without the knowledge of the mayor, the mayor was still at home, Somebody else was appointed as an acting mayor in her presence, officiated in a meeting that sought to present a report that wanted to suspend the municipal manager. In the presence of the mayor, the mayor can, con the mayor can, con can, can confirm this to you. The mayor was at home quarantined and some guys grouped together and elected an interim mayor so as to process a report that sought to suspend the municipal manager. Now, I would want to get a second comment from the mayor. That is it true that initially the municipal manager was suspended without her knowledge as a sitting mayor and what has happened afterwards. And Chair, what I want to bring to, to the attention of the committee is that it shouldn't evade our minds that the municipal manager for all this time has been in the good books of, 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 of councillors, except, except DA councillors, of course. It only, it, the, the issue of, of suspending the municipal manager only arose five days after he refused to sign the invoice, the handwritten invoice for Party Leaves with Training Institute. Now, I want the, I, I would, I, I want to add uh, the, the executive mayor to to come clean with us, tell us what is her own personal view. Is there any link between uh, the suspension of the municipal manager? And his, and his refusal five days earlier of signing the party leaseway invoice. That's the second issue, Chair. The third issue, Chair, is around the water tanks that the executive mayor has referred to. The executive mayor will know that as the DA in OR Tambo, I went as far as writing to Minister Lindy Wasisulu on the matter and also... Uh, 
Zuma. Because in as much as they have bought 800 tanks for for Oratabu district, some of those water tanks are still lying in, I mean, if you're taking Moza, for instance, the last time I checked, it tanks that were supposed to be used by people of Moza municipality were still in one of the councillors councillors yard and they they were not being used and the last issue mm -hmm. for a, how many how many honorable member can you name the councillor's name and and the number of tanks that are there for our benefit he is the, with pleasure sir. he is the chief whip of Moza municipality i've got photographs mm -hmm. i can send them to you there are okay. about eight to ten of those tanks in his yard do you He's know the chief do you know as to when has they been lying there, the chief whip's house? It's about it's about two months now, chair. I will sure. send you. The, I'll I'll send the photographs, chair. If you can, I, know I, that, I will appreciate I, that. Yeah? After the meeting, I'll send them to you, chair. Thanks very much. Thank and sure. and and the last issue, chair, relates to the issue of the director. You you must have you must have read that uh, times times live ran an article about a week ago that most people that appear on the attendance register that claims to have been spoken to actually say we haven't seen party leaves in our area. And this includes a, a, a ward committee member that I speak, he lives in Port St. John's chair. I can again provide with the name uh, outside of this meeting. She says, but nobody came to me and say this, 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 that about coronavirus. This is blatant fraud, sir. I will stop at that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Member. Honorable Fesson. Uh, thank you, Chair. I cannot, I cannot differ from many of the colleagues that has, I've spoken tonight. Um, this is absolutely horrific to see the grade of corruption that's going on, so-called fraud, um, with 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 things that is really important to people. I got a document that was passed over my desk about. Um, one of our colleagues said that the, 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 the report that is presented to us is not really, um, um, doesn't cover everything. Um, there, was a, there was a report presented in council by the acting mayor Ngumla on June 17 that details how the OR Tambu district allegedly paid, paid out more than the one, 168 million to companies some of which had not even lifted a finger. They include 133.9 million in three unexplained and advanced payments to Amatola Water, 12.6 million to Ruacon to supply material to Signal Hill in Tata that is yet to be delivered, 10.3 million to Kinasonke construction for the Manguduli bulk, bulk super, uh, um, sewer that work was never done. 9,9 .9 to Kualu constructions for the same project, also with no work being done. 2,5 to Valatone to deliver water tanks, although there's no evidence the company delivered them. And 1 million to Phoenix tanks to deliver water tanks, though there is no evidence the company delivered them. I think... Well, the uh, company name, Honorable Michelle, the last one. Uh, phone Nix tanks to deliver water tanks. Though there no, is no, no if the figure uh, one million. One million. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, what I what I suggest uh, or propose in these circumstances is that a, 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 a thorough forensic investigation should be done to, on this municipality because there is just too too many. There are too many loose wires here. There are too many things that is substantially doesn't make sense. Even if you look at the MIC re 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 prioritization plan, 
You can also see that there is large uh, amount of, of money that is being paid or, or the project costs. And there's really not significance in, in what we know is really spent on this and is it inflated. If you look at boreholes, uh, how many boreholes were drilled for these for the prices that is quoted in this uh, in this uh, program? So I really think that a, for, uh, a thorough forensic investigation should be done, and the committee must have um, access to that as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Fessel. Uh, I should also raise some few questions at my disposal. Mine will also emanate from the SCOPA briefing in the morning. Uh, we, we received a report uh, from the AGS Honorable Hadewe and Honorable Hussein were in the meeting. So there were issues that uh, the AG raised uh, that is very concerning to me in particular. And I think I was in a meeting, I was in a meeting too. You even asked the questions, but I should think uh, for the benefit of those that were not here. Uh, the issue that is very concerning with this uh, district municipality, uh, this 1.4 billion. Uh, it accounted to 39% of the total irregular expenditure in the province of the cake. Then uh, what is very important and what is of concern is this issue to say that uh, the municipality did not adequately plan for the procurement of their goods and services. The issues that also honorable officers, which then resulted, there's a lot lot of deviations that is happening in the municipality, especially from supply chain management legislation. Where in in set, set, numerous circumstances, they use emergency procurement without uh, a, a, a adequate assistance. Uh, this has been a trend in the municipality. That's what the AG says, even in prior years. And then also the issue that uh, the municipality has been awarding a number of infrastructure tenders uh, when the committees that adjudicated those bids were not always correctly constituted. This is a clear indication uh, of, of people then just by pricing the supply chain uh, uh, legislation. And then uh, the AG is also raising this issue to say this could even, even be potentially higher than what is thinking it is now. Uh, because the municipalities did not have control in place to identify correctly and disclose all prior irregular expenditures. So uh, that, that comes back to the issue of the leadership in the municipality that one is much concerned about. But now, coming to this issue of the, the, the suspension of the MM, uh, this is the issue that one also want to, to, to raise issues as the colleagues have done that I won't dwell much on it. But there are issues that, uh, listening to what Honorable uh, Lindy was saying, uh, and also what Honorable Fessor is saying, because Honorable Fessor made mention of the report that led to the suspension of the municipal manager uh, uh, that was presented in council. So we like yeah, the speaker and the other members who were, who were presided over this to also clarify this. Uh, when the municipal manager was suspended, was there no report that was submitted to council about the allegations of financial mismanagement as honorable Fessor is raising? And then can the colleagues from Nelson Mandela, sorry, OR Tambo, this municipality, explain to us whether they are aware of any criminal cases that were opened to that regard. And then also with regard to the procedural aspect, as Honorable Hadewe was saying, where they noticed this issue of intention to suspend uh, to the municipal manager prior to suspension. If yes or no, if it's yes, did the municipal manager responded 
to the notices. And then also then uh, there are issues that uh, of invoices that I've read in the media that was also raised for the interfaith faith religious meetings that were held in May. One will have to get clarity who was the director responsible for the procurement of the of these uh, meetings and then also whether there were payments made to that effect. Uh, also, Executive Mayor, I think it's Honorable Direct and the team. Was, can you give us the breakdown of the 1.4 billion expenditure as indicated? And then the, there's an issue that I think we will, won't leave it unattended. Uh, can you tell us, because I didn't see in your presentation how many uh, water tanks were brought to you from national government in response to the pandemic, and how many are still lying, like the one that Honorable Mulindi is raising, that there are tanks that are lying in the house of the of the of the of the chief whip of a local municipality. I'm raising this because you are the water authority as a district, and you had that responsibility to make sure that all the water tankers. So we want to know to tell us uh, how many allocation did you receive for for all your municipalities under your jurisdiction, and how many water tankers were actually restored. Installed. The other issue is the issue that Honorable Mamkiz is saying. Are you having a tankering a water system wherein you are filling all those tankers as a, 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 a Honorable Mamkiz was raising the issue of water? And then there are this unexplained advance payment that we paid to Amatola, executive mayor in the team. Uh, there's an amount of 28 million that you're all aware of. And then a further 91 million and a further uh, 14 million. I think these are the issues that uh, uh, one needs to tell us what's happening to link up with what Honorable Mpumza was raising. What are the capacity and the skills of the chief? Does the municipality have a chief financial officer? And what is the chief financial officer's uh, a, a, a qualification that could allow such a, a huge amount of money to be lost of critical importance. When national government uh, give you grants, is the expectation that the municipality must spend all those grants? Uh, according to the reports, there's been a lot of underspending in the municipality when it comes to grants. Uh, there is an underspending that is reported of over 157 million in relation to the uh, MIC. Also, another underspending that relates to 71 million that relates to the WSIG grant. Uh, then, also with regard to the drought relief uh, fund combined with the RBIG fund, uh, uh, the drought relief fund underspending amounts to over 12 million. And then the 36.7 million that has to deal with the RB, G, RBIG grant. Colleagues uh, from the Metro, how does these things happen under your watch? Do you really have a, a functional a, a municipality? Uh, because when you look at this as honorable Lindy is tracing it, there's been issues that has been there, as the AG has said it in his reports. They come from previous financial year. And then this is the result of lack of consequence management and the way you are going to deal with your disciplinary measures to favor certain groups and favor other individuals. If then you don't lead from the top, then that's this that's why there's always room for people to run around or run away as the ag says it so we want to hear from the leadership of the municipality and we felt we need to call all of you the pmt uh, the, the 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 mmc finance and the chairperson for for from mpec so that you tell us what is actually happening because the status quo, as I said in my opening remarks, 
leaves much to be desired. Uh, and we'll also love uh, DG4C and the DM and the minister, if she has already joined, to comment at the end. But we are handing over. I'll do it. Executive Mayor, you will respond. Then uh, the Deputy Executive Mayor will respond on matters that feel is their competency. The Speaker must respond and the Chief Whip must respond and the other two, two MMCs must respond. At the end of the day, I will also give the uh, acting MM and the CFO, including the MM, to also say something. But the reality, you need to take collective responsibility for this 1.4 billion irregular expenditure that the municipality is faced with. Over to your team, Artem. Uh, thank you. Chairperson, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I think uh, the other members, they will also assist in answering the questions that were put here. Uh, going to the- We can see the, the, the executive man. You can't see me even now. Back room, Honorable Mam Kizet. Yes, it's okay oh. now. Okay, can I carry on? Yes, proceed. On the summary of the expenditure in the report, uh, the issues that are written there, for instance, on the radio awareness session, COVID-19, it's 1,1 million and some odds of th thousand. And the provision of PPE for essential services, it's 957, not the 1,1. I think the numbers, they've gone down a little bit there. And then supply of non-contact thermal meters, it's 132,000 and some odds of hundreds. Then the PPE again, 680. Then the fumigation of the municipal, all our municipal buildings and the satellite offices in all the local municipalities. We had to fumigate all of them. It's 1.3 million. Then the testing of the municipal staff and the councillors. Then it's 102, 750. So it's, it's like that, then you have the same total. I think the numbers there, they are written not correctly. But to say that how much- Then assist us, cost. executive mayor, executive mayor, if you are saying then the numbers are not written correctly, assist us, give us the correct figures. You is the, the one I was charge. giving. Is the what one is the total the total is 4,326,938.67. I was going to say that we'll do a breakdown of each and every item that the unit cost of each item, how much is it? We'll bring that report also. Maybe tomorrow we'll bring it stipulating because now we're doing on slides. I will submit that report. Then on the issue of Mpindweni that appeared on cutting, cutting edge, in what five, Nyandeni, that Mpindweni issue, we've got plans together with MISA for water provisioning, but there must be a road that is constructed. Luckily, I'm from Nyandeni, and I was, to, I was the mayor in Nyandin where we initiated a plan of constructing a road into that area. The soil is loose there, whereby we have uh, the truck that is blading. What, what do we call that? Uh, uh, the grader that is blading. It had to go and fall over down there. The soil is very loose. And the municipality of Nyanden, local municipality, 
was penalized by the Department of Environmental Affairs for constructing that road there. Then they had to, you, ha you have, if you are constructing a road from Pinduin, you have to come from Ntangano. Uh, you should start it there. It's a long road. When you see the people crossing that river, they are crossing the Mzimvubu River. They are on the other side here on Nyandin. The, the side of, of, uh, on the other side of the river, it's Ntabanku. So when they are crossing the river, going down there, they are going to Ntabanku. Uh, otherwise, they are uh, on this side, Kutuakupingeneno for Nyandin. And the sand is very loose. You can't even go there yourself. It's the Uyachibili, Kukuambuyocho Napa. Hence, we had discussions with those families. There are few families, and they are plowing. They are Nzangu there. They say they can't leave it there. That area that on the river bank, they are plowing e, 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 what you would call them. Cannabis. Can, it's it cannabis. They are plowing it there when we went to talk with them. They said no, there is no soil that can give them isivuno esingakaya. Those donkeys they carry the bags of that in Zangu going higher. I've went there. You can go and stay to, uh, and, and sit there. You can call them. There are few families staying there into that area. So there are plans for water provisioning. But first, you should have a road constructed going to those. Those are 19 families, 19 homesteads that are there in, in that area. The person who was talking there, it's a, it, 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 it's a what committee member who was talking on the cutting edge. Then also the issue of the invoices, or let me start first with uh, uh, the, 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 the issue of contractors that were given money without it being paid. The Ruacon and others, you know, as the municipality, we have been taken to court by some of those contractors. We have got letters here in my office. I'm going to give them to the ex municipal manager to because they're saying that we're tarnishing their names. Kinasonke and Kualo. There are letters that they are taking the municipality to court. When I received the issues of Ruakon from the MEC to say that there are contractors that have been given money without doing the work, I took that report. I said, municipal manager, respond to this, please. I, I gave the municipal manager two days, this suspended one, to respond on that. Then I gave the responses to the MEC and I was taking those responses to the council because the Amatola water is the implementing uh, agent for our regional bulk infrastructure grant project. With, which are from the KSDPI, the King Sabata Dalingebo Presidential Initiative. Those are the projects. So it started there. All the project of the RP, the amount is 266 million. They are implemented by Amatola. The contract of Amatola ends in 2021. So those projects you are talking about of the advancement are those projects 
that are being implemented by Amatola. So I wrote to the municipal manager, the suspended one, to, to give me a report about these issues of Ruwakon and everything. There is a report. When I try to take the report to the mayoral committee so that we take the action, so that I was going to appraise the, 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 the council on that report of the action that we are going to take, then there was already an action by the council because there was a report from the portfolio committees of the council who are playing an oversight. We are being piloted for separation of powers as, 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 as the district municipality. We have at the executive and the legislature. So there was those reports from the portfolio committees. They tabled those reports in this executive, yes. executive mayor. Can you yes. sit properly? Yes. The yes. feedback I'm getting from the people, they can't see you. They are only seeing your nose. Go a bit oh, down sorry. or stay still. That's better. You must stay like that. OK, thank you. Yes. So those issues, they were tabled, then the municipal manager was, was, was suspended by the council. So I cannot say much, as I already alluded to the fact that uh, 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 the municipal manager has taken the municipality to court on the issues of procedure and otherwise. So I cannot uh, say much or, 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 or on that one. Then the invoices that were on the social media, on Facebook and everywhere on the news, those invoices are the invoices uh, that were written by the director legislative services claiming a payment. Then the municipal manager, the suspended one, didn't uh, 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 pay them. Then he, he wrote back to the director to say he want further explanation how this door to door occurred in the various uh, 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 things. Then those responses, they have not came, but the council yesterday, in fact, I can say that I've written a letter to the, 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 the acting municipal manager to take action on the director consent because the director is accountable to the municipal manager. So I wanted to follow the correct procedure to, to give me a report on what is happening and the authenticity of those invoices and I've given him two days. So the, the report, I was going to get that report yesterday, got the report yesterday, then there was a council meeting, then the council through the urgent matters that were brought to the council by the speaker on the letter from the director legislative services talking about those invoices requested to be granted a leave so that the council can take action on those invoices. Then the council agreed to that leave, even though I already had instituted some measures in so that I can take that to council. So the director is on leave now of the legislative uh, 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 services who wrote those invoices. In fact, as the council, we have already said that we want an independent investigator who will investigate everything, including the COVID-19 expenses, so that that report is brought to the council. What are we doing with the irregular expenditure that the municipality always incurs? The MPEG, in its report, said 
we must look at the uh, irregular expenditure. After I, 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 I was from a parliament, from the select committee, to talk about the irregular expenditure. We also, as the mayoral committee, agreed that we must look at the expenditure quarterly. And we have got a municipal disciplinary board whereby we wrote it clear in the terms of reference of that disciplinary board that each and every individual in a department, be it the lowest paid uh, person who incur an irregular expenditure, it will be his or her duty to face the music. I've got that one. We've started with the report, but then uh, the lockdown came, then the, the report now will going to bring the report to the next council on the third quarter to look at that irregular expenditure. Otherwise, for the irregular expenditure of 1.4 billion, they are from the supply chain management uh, uh, procurement uh, uh, processes. Most of them, the irregular expenditure of this municipality, I even sat with the CFO. I said, CFO, you have 19 years being here in this municipality, but always this municipality is incurring the irregular expenditure. Maybe I can also say that when we raised that, there were companies that I said, can you just give me even a one pager so that I can take this report? Because sometimes if a person give a verbal report, when we are taking, can say that I didn't say so. So if it's written, at least a person who is in the authority should be able to write down a report. So we're trying to look at these issues. Then also, so the investigation, we have instituted the investigation we have requested the municipal manager to institute the investigation in all the issues. I even went, went to their uh, management retreat when we started the year. I talked with those directors, also the middle management of this municipality, when I said that if they are not doing it good, but uh, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, 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 some or of the directors, they don't care. You can see that. You can see that they don't care. Uh, 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 then, uh, maybe I will give other people, but for Amatola, I've called Amatola for several meetings set with it, especially when we saw that the grants were not going to be spent. And also on the issue of being given some money or giving money to contractors or this uh, 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 allegation of Ruacon said they must submit a report. I also requested the speaker that uh, uh, Amatola Water, sh we should get a deputation for it in the council to come and explain if they are advancing the contractor's monies. So I, I, I have said that we have said with them, whereby in most of the time, you'll find that we are the people uh, at fault where they will say that uh, there are invoices sitting with us amounting to 16 million at some point, 55 million at some point. Hence, we have uh, 36 million from the RP was deducted from that uh, uh, 266 grant that we got, and now it's reduced by 36 million. Executive the other Can you assist this meeting? There's a lot of agitation from members. 
Can you explain these amounts of 28 million, 91 million, and 14 million uh, unexplained advance payment to Amato? Then to just give it a general response like here. If you can't, then let your other colleagues explain that. Because the, the I think way I will give, okay. I'll yeah. give the municipal manager to, uh, to explain because there is a report that was submitted by him on those uh, 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 points or, 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 or on the advancement because or on the purported advancement that is said there. I think that, that they will give a report or, 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 or on that one. Uh, there is a report. I will submit the report, a written one, to the committee. I think they will talk to that report also because it is the same report that was tabled in the Council of the 17th that suspended uh, the municipal manager, tabled by the deputy executive mayor, those, 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 those advanced uh, uh, payment, which I said. So I'm you have no knowledge of them up. yourself as the executive mayor? Okay. Uh, executive uh, mayor, you don't have, uh, you have uh, no knowledge of this advance payment yourself as the executive mayor, because the MFMA is very clear that you must do oversight yourself. It gives you particular responsibility as the executive mayor. But nevertheless, maybe let me hand over to the executive mayor, to the deputy executive mayor to talk to this matters. I've got deputy a report. I was investigating it and submitted also to other people to investigate the authenticity of the report that has been given by the municipal manager. So you were investing it, investigating it, and what were your findings? I haven't finished. I only got to know about them on the 15th of June. So who's investigating? Do you have the capacity? Because the agitation... No, we don't have the capacity. I requested uh, the Department of COPTA to assist on that regard. So they are assisting. Deputy Mayor, can you come on this one, please? You seem uh, to be the person having thank you. implemented the suspension. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, greetings to all members of the committee. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in, 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 in trying to respond to uh, this question, the, the question uh, currently raised, the issue of uh, the, 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 the advanced payment, especially the one that... Uh, yeah. yeah? Can he see it properly? The nation wants to see his face. Yes, yeah, because we're only seeing his head. Yo. Yeah, the people want to see you, Deputy we want Mayor, to please. See you. Who are these people who are messing up the municipality? Yeah. Yeah. Don't hide. Uh, Don't am I visible? Am I visible enough? I Come don't closer, know. like you are moving forward. Yes. Uh, go back a bit. A bit. There you go. That's better. Yes. Don't go down. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to every, uh, all members of the committee, the, the joint cast. Uh, uh, of the uh, especially uh, the water and sanitation. Uh, they were the ones who were doing visits around. They were the ones who were, 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 were visiting all the, proje the projects uh, uh, according to information that they had. So when they came to, uh, to, 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 the, to the council, uh, understanding that uh, according to the law, uh, if, if the, uh, the suspension of the uh, of MM is supposed to come from the MM, to, from the executive mayor. They pointed out to all uh, these issues. 
Uh, and also they urgently re requested for the suspension so that they wanted to, to, the, the council to, uh, uh, to authorize investigation into these things. And uh, also they wanted, because they said there are some criminal uh, uh, areas in these uh, uh, issues, they wanted them to be investigated by the police. So they wanted the case to be opened. Uh, then that is why the council decided to, uh, to in their resolution, to have investigation and independent investigation to the issues and also the case to be opened. As we speak, the case, the case uh, has been opened by the acting uh, 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 MM. And also, uh, already the, 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 the security uh, forces have been uh, are involved, Hawks and uh, led by the Hawks. So, and also sorry, FI Chair, who opened the case for the record? Is the, is the, is the acting MM was appointed at that point in time because uh, MM was. Uh, put on, on uh, precautionary suspension so that the case can be opened. So the case is opened. The investigation is going on. And uh, as we speak now, I think uh, uh, the, the cell phones and, uh, and the computers have been taken from uh, the, the, the MM and the other uh, uh, managers and directors. Chair, yeah. Chair. So, yes. so, why is the why why is the mayor saying saying now um, saying now she's investigating uh, the, the this matter and he has he had asked Copter to to actually assist her and when the chairperson is asking then you then then the mayor says uh, she, she has not completed. Where are you assisting the committee to actually get the information here? Why are you saying th th two different things? No, I, yes. I in fact, I, I, I don't know because the, the process, we, we have been involved in the process, starting from the committees, uh, we are represented, all of us in the committees, mm -hmm. and also the, the chief whip of the, co of the committee, also is involved in that committee. It means the chief whip of, our, 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 of the council is aware. They were the ones also uh, who got the report from the committees and they uh, were, were part of assisting the committee to take that uh, report uh, to, to the council because they spoke to the council, to the report. I think the, the problem was that during the day when the council was uh, in progress, the, 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 the executive mayor couldn't get through. And uh, the council reported to us, the speaker, that uh, they, can't get the, connect, they can't connect to uh, the executive mayor. So that is why the executive mayor could not be... Uh, Order, chair. Chairperson, can I raise a point of order? Okay. Chairperson, can, uh, I raise a point, can, I, can I raise a point of order? What is the point of order all about? Chairperson, who's raising a point of order is in Melinda Nana. Unfortunately, my signal, my, <laughs> my signal chair. Can you address is, the point of order, Honorable Nana? Thank you very much, Chair. The signal from my, from my M is so bad. It's not chair. a point of order. Raise the point of order, Honorable Sure, Manu. sure. Chair, the deputy mayor claims that officials and whoever could not get through to the mayor whilst the mayor was on quarantine. I want to remind the deputy mayor, Chair, that giving <coughs> untruth and lies to a committee of parliament equals to a criminal offense. 
the truth is, Chair, the mayor will tell you that she was at her home having not pleaded to be uh, unable to perform her duties. But all of a sudden, the deputy mayor was lying before you and some of his own cabal decided to call a council meeting in which a report that sought to suspend the municipal manager was tabled. That is the patent truth, Chair. And I want to, I want Chair, I want you, Chair, okay. to keep you in mind. Your point. You have made your point, Honorable Thank you, Chair. Uh, Deputy Mayor, we need to remind you that lying to a committee or parliament is a serious offense. But I have allowed it based on the fact that we are all agreeing that the executive mayor was in self-quarantine. And we have dealt with Nelson Mandela in the past in municipalities where there is a, a, a deputy mayor in the absence of the mayor. The standing orders allowed the deputy mayor to assume the responsibility of the executive mayor. So the reason why I asked the deputy mayor, maybe I will also call the speaker of council, is whether there was a legally constituted uh, council that dealt with this matter. That's why I ask, because the mayor said to us that she was not away, that it was not done. But unless somebody dispute the legitimacy of the council meeting, because yes, the executive mayor was incapacitated by issue that of the fact that she was under quarantine. But in terms of the institution, it's a no going concern. In the absence where the executive mayor is incapacitated, the executive, the deputy mayor take that role. It's there in the standing order. We've learned that as a committee, we were briefed by Nelson Mandela Bay under the circumstances. So the, then the issue, executive mayor, deputy mayor, what Honorable Nana is raising, don't tell us that the officials were unable to get hold of the mayor because you are aware the mayor was not reachable. She was incapacitated. Tell us, that's what we ask you to speak on this matter. What in relation to the report that is also then uh, supported by Honorable Faisal in this meeting, the report that made, I'm still going to give the MM to talk solely on the matter of his suspension. But in the absence of the mayor, there was the leadership, there was this council, whether that council complied with the legal requirements on how it should be constituted. So don't go to town, Deputy Mayor. Tell us if the report that Honorable Fessel is presenting to us, because he said that this is the report that forms the basis of the suspension of the MM. There's no need for you to go to town. That's why I need to remind you. And I think at some point, tell us what did you do then as an executive mayor, whether that council is true that the report that Honorable Professor is referring to was tabled to council, and did you comply with your own rules and standing order? Because I even asked a question whether the MM was given notice, a sufficient time to respond in terms of the procedural requirements. This is how we want you to respond to not for you to go to town executive mayor and then you raise issues. So can you focus? I think in some other way, that's why I sustain the order. Assist this meeting and we don't have the luxury time of time. Go straight to the point and don't bring side issues. That's what I can advise. Proceed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be ready to filter in on the question as we are raised on this matter. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, in in fact, Chairperson, I understand. I understand the, uh, the uh, what the Chairperson is saying to me and also other uh, honourable members. Uh, in the in the council, uh, I was I came into the council as as a member of the council. It was in the council that they appointed me. And when they were appointing me, it is because they said they couldn't get executive mayor. All the, all the reports which were supposed to be tabled by executive mayor were, were given to me to, 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 to report about to the council. That's what I did. As to other questions, the, uh, the speaker will come in. Thank you, Chairperson.
Uh, honorable Chair? Yes. Can I hand over the speaker to deal with this issue? On the issue of the council meeting and the notices. Then you'll come in, Honorable Hadef. Okay, th th thank you, Honorable Chair. No problem. Can the speaker assist us on this matter? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, the honorable members, uh, the executive mayor, EM, and other colleagues, my chief whip. Uh, let me start uh, by saying uh, the director that we are talking about, uh, Director Tsayana, the time uh, these things now were unfolding, her husband passed, passed on because of the COVID, and she also tested positive. Uh, when all these things were happening, even when we were convening the council, she was still at home and uh, reported that even her son, uh, by the name of Pico, tested positive. So the council, when was dealing with this matter, was very uh, up concerned and appraise of the information, but I will come to that. But Chair, let me go straight to a member which said there are water tanks that are in the yard of Chief Whip of Nusa, Honorable Nkungu. We as OR Tambo District Municipality, when we saw that over the media, we took a quick step to make a follow up through our council committees. And those tanks were delivered to the relevant uh, communities beginning May. As I'm speaking here, there are no water tanks there. Two, the criminal case, yes, was opened. Now, indeed, the law agencies are doing their work. Four, was the council convened properly? Yes, the council was convened properly. Also, the reports were tabled as were supposed to be tabled by the chair of committees. In regard to this one, was tabled by the chair of the committee for water and sanitation, Honorable Kusana. Indeed, the executive mayor was not part of the council that day. Now, we seek an advi advice from our legal advisor, Mr. Nkalweni, and I had to adjourn the council when we were to report about the executives. Now, when the executive mayor is not present, there is a provision in our pieces of legislation, in particular, the Structures Act, or Section 56, Subsection 6, which indicates that the Deputy Executive Mayor assume duties of being the Executive Mayor when the Executive Mayor is not is absent or when there is a vacancy in the office. But also above that, the council also elected a deputy executive mayor to act as the acting executive mayor in that particular council. So the process was properly followed. Another question, were there any letters written to the municipal manager? My chair, if this committee can agree to what the executive mayor indicated, that this matter is sub decay. For example, O deputy executive mayor is the second respondent. I am the third respondent. And the suspended municipal manager is part of this debate. And this matter is before the court of law. Can we be then afforded opportunity rather to submit our responses in writing rather than to debate this in the public 
why is the matter is before the court of law. Because some of the questions here that are being asked are the part of the arguments that will unfold before the court of law. I'm pleading to you, Chair, the executive mayor put it clearly, and I also concur with it. Going to happen, Chair. It's not going to happen. Happen in this committee. It's not the first municipality that we're asking questions, this one. That is not going to happen. We rather live here at 12 o'clock. That's not going to happen. We can't waste our time like this. Leza, Leza, no more, no emotions. Talk through the chairperson. The Chase. reason why we call these people here, we want to be, to be, come to the bottom of this. Ne? So there's no need to be emotional. And they were mindful of this subject, the care road. At the same time, we are reliable inform that so that doesn't come to the to point, unless if I'm not a uh, private to that, because uh, 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 we we are aware that the MM has withdrawn this case in court. I'm subject to correction, but that's the things that the facts on the table thus far. Well. So the subject care matter does uh, come to the and then we allow us to do our oversight so, and then let's deal with these issues. There are issues. Can can so, I continue? The road that is happening in that community that we need to deal with. Oh, don't, don't upset, upset members as well. Focus on answering. There's a lot of questions that members have asked. That need to be responded. We don't care. We've been working like honorable. Don't even mind to knock off him or post midnight. But we will answer those that give. I want to call you here so that you can come and to us. And if there's anything that we want, we'll tell you what needs to happen. We know what we want to do. So if you are building your platform speaker of not answering to questions, I'll skip you and head over the next person. I will done if you finish responding to matters that you feel they are within your purview that you must respond to. Let me continue, Chair. Yes. Uh, I kept quiet, Chair, because I'm also a speaker. Then when the speaker speaks, then I decided to keep quiet. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to continue once more. Then, Chair, let me go straight to the processes that maybe I must jump to because uh, to assist the committee. The precautional suspension, which was placed by the council to who suspended municipal manager was for the council to open a case, which that was done. And also when the council of the acting municipal manager opened the case, the, suspend, the precautionary suspension was lifted. When the precautionary suspension was lifted, we received letters in an unusual way because it was then on a Sunday when we were informed that we are supposed to appear before the court in Port Elizabeth. The municipal manager has taken us to court. When he was then a When the matter was uplifted, on Saturday, you worked and appointed lawyers to represent the institution, but not to represent the second respondent and the third respondent. In this case, the second respondent, that is the deputy executive mayor and the third respondent, the speaker. Mind you, it's him who took the council to court and he appointed the lawyers to represent the same council that he took to court now. Oh, Sir, honorable Chair. 
Honorable Chair. Honorable. What are the issues? Yes, the the honourable speaker, he is moving on without giving us the sequence of events that led to the suspension as the presiding officer on the day of the meeting. Yes. Can you give yes, us? I agree with you, honourable Adebe. We Please. ask questions on this matter. Was Before there a notice of intention? Yeah. Proceed. Yes. Before you go to the lifting, give us the detail as the presiding officer. What happened? Blow by blow. Thank you. Yeah, I, Jefferson. Okay. Chair. Yes. Chair. Yes. The speaker also. The speaker must be visible as well. We don't see him. He's in very dark. The nation yeah, is waiting. The this nation, issue. they want to Can see it? who are these people who are messing up their municipality. So let him be visible. Yes. Put on the light. Yes. Are you on load shading, speaker? Can you put your lights on? Can you see me now? That's better. Not yes, good. stay like that. Stay put like that. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Chair. I will answer all the questions that are before me to answer. But the unfortunate part, I will start to another one only to find the owner member is interested to this one. But I will go through all of them. Now, let me zoom into what transpired in the council. The acting, the municipal manager was suspended on the spot that day. He was given a notice that he can challenge his precautional suspension if he sees that indeed the municipality acted unlawfully, respecting all his rights. He never challenged that. Now, when the case was opened, we lifted. Mind you, that day we took two resolutions. Good resolution number one that put him on the precautional suspension in order for the council to elect an acting municipal manager to open a case. Resolution number two, give him a letter to respond why he cannot be suspended and he must respond with in seven days. On the 26th, when we have noticed that through the report presented before the council, that he never responded, we extended that to say it must be extended till Monday, four o'clock. And even on that, he never responded. Now, we went to court. Why are you dark now? I don't know, Chair, because I'm in a dark area. I'm living in rural areas. Now I try to find a place where I can find an internet so that I can connect because I struggle but to connect. But you were visible initially. Why are you now dark again? We all live in rural areas, Speaker. We all live in rural areas. It's not an excuse, Barry. I live in Alice at the gate. Order, we are order, order, order. Thank you. you Thank you, Honorable Chair. Why are you becoming darker now? We are Baleka. We are Baleka, Chair. I will never run away. But you can see that I switched on the lights in the car. So nothing I can do now. You can see the lights on top of my head. So oh, the car. She, no, Chair. She's, she, he's in the car, Chair. And why is he holding a meeting in a car? Because we are told we must all stay home. We must be at our houses. There is no internet where I'm staying, Chai. I wanted to get the network. Okay. It's a, it's a valid proceed. Thank you very much, my Chai. 
can, now, can some of you who are making noise meet your mic so that you can hear what is the speaker saying, please? Now, I'm saying that the matter was before the court on the 30th, and uh, it was procrastinated for a day that will be announced. And uh, we're also afforded now the opportunity to file our answering David, which we did. Let me stop there, Chair. Now, also, Chair, there is a question about the leave of a director, whether you know, it is said that the director was given a leave by the council. No, immediately when I heard this, according to your arrangement in the National Assembly and the provincial uh, legislators, the di director legislative is a council secretary as is the parliament secretary to you. Now, we wanted to get a report. What is it about these uh, invoices? The director gave an answer, but also indicated to say, this matter, I heard about these invoices that are moving around in the social media. This report was submitted to the office of the municipal manager, and the municipal manager wrote back to me whilst I was busy with this. My husband passed on because of the COVID and myself get infected. Now, I was to respond because he wanted a clarity, which is good. Now, then, Chair, this matter was very urgent because it deals with the corrupt activities that the council is busy dealing with. And we want to root out the corruption in that institution. The reasons that led to the suspension of the municipal manager is one of the reasons mentioned one of the honorable members that amounted to those uncounted uh, advancement that costed the municipality 168 million. As a speaker of this council, I also presented these things before the Troika and invited the members of the Troika Honourable members, can we go and visit those projects? Because here are the pictures. I went to those projects one by one. That's why we said we can't investigate on our own. The police must be involved and Remember, independent. Hello? Speaker, speaker. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Speaker, speaker. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Did you went there alone or you went there with the members of Troka? Did you went the SNPMT or you went there alone? My first visit, Chair, I went Speaker. there with... Yes, Chair. Speaker. Yeah, over, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear my Chair. Hey. Did Your you question go with is... the other members of Troka or alone? I went there, Chair, with the committee members first. Then I came back on the day of the Troika and I requested the Troika members to go to the nearby one because I think it's, my, it's plus minus 400 meters away from our offices. But uh, the members of the Troika did not uh, visit that project because I wanted them also, I wanted them also to visit the project so that they can see what I have seen also myself. So the reasons that led to the suspension of the municipal manager are those reasons that are reflected to the presentation by the committees. And also, they are very serious, but we might uh, see all the technicalities that uh, members are, are raising, which we respect, but for the council to allow the processes to advance, to deal with the corrupt activities, and also, the council 
took a sober decision yesterday to say this party leads with a company must be investigated and investigated how was party leads with appointed and appointed by who agreeing with the honorable member who was saying if it is be no more getting jobs in that institution so we said also investigation must be done to all the COVID-19 expenses since the day we started because we want to the, get to the bottom of all these irregularities that are taking place in the municipalities and among other things that uh, were raised are the issues that even you are alluding to raised by the auditor general which all of us as the people who are representing uh, the poorest of the poor we must be concerned and act for the best interest of our people so what we were doing as a council we were trying to act for the best interest of our people who made us to be called today honorable members so we're doing an honorable work for them thank you very much sir. Uh, uh, questions for you from the honorable hussein no honorable so, Kalipi, so, who and so, want to ask the speaker sorry sir. Uh, there's a question that i want to answer mm. you want to answer sorry, yes you there was a question answer. you must the, li the leave for the the director was requested by the director was not an alternative maybe the honorable member uh, was briefed not in a way that it was correct or what was done in the council also chair there is no cabal in that council honorable chair there are honorable members who are deployed in that council who deal with those members as honorable councillors including those of da led by honorable members Thank you very much. Okay. Honorable uh, Hussein, Honorable yeah. who else? Chairperson. Chairperson. Hello, Chairperson. No, 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 no. no. Honorable I'm not sure. I'm the, uh, yeah. Honorable Ngozi. I'm yes. Chair. I'm still coming to you. I know you are the chief whip. But the members yeah. have indicated to me that they want to ask questions to the speaker so that we Thank dispose you. of the speaker. You will come. Allow me to chair the meeting. I'll, I call you to this meeting, all of you. I'm going to thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm a fair, very balanced, fair chairperson for those that know me. So I'll give each and every one of you an opportunity to speak. Don't worry, you are my guest. Remember, I invited all of you here because whoever we have invited to the, this meeting, we know he or she has got the role to play. And don't worry, you're going to leave having spoken. Remember, we invited you. So can we ask uh, members who want to follow up on the speaker, knowing that he's also in the car? So I'm... <laughs> Honorable Honorable Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. Honorable Hussein. Yeah, uh, Chair, I have a question for uh, uh, the, the speaker. And Mr. Speaker, can I just ask you this? The work that that training institute, Patelis, we have done, the one I'm referring to is the door to door campaign for that in excess of 4 million rand. Did that project emerge from your office? 
was was the instruction given to that company from your office where did this where did they get their instructions to do their work from and those invoices that were being processed did they also come from your office to the mm so i'd like to know where the where it started from and how did that company actually get to do that work that they did somebody must have given them an instruction to do so did that come from your office and who in particular would have been involved in that project honorable mutalibi honorable mutalibi yes chairperson uh, deputy speaker uh, we are spendula we are still ukuthi ama processes were followed when the uh, the mm was suspended right and then you also told us about the reasons so yesterday uh, yesterday when the when the motion was put in terms of suspension of the director on the director of legislative service so you didn't take that decision but i want to ask you a direct question since you suspended the mm on the basis of the corruption that you mentioned what is difficult for you to suspend the director of legislative services on the very same account of investigation of party lizwe because you also made mention that party lizwe training institution yesterday you also took a decision that he must or she must be blacklisted he must not get anything from the municipality because you are painting a picture that you are not even happy as well as the collective leadership of the municipality so therefore as honorable hussein is asking who gave the the, the instruction to the director to sign those invoices to this particular party list and then why is the director was not investigated if we are so in if you are so consistent in terms of fighting corruption Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable um, Kalipi. Honorable Nana. Hello. Proceed. You are noted. Thanks very much. Uh, you know, Chair, uh, I want to caution the speaker. Madim Lungi, who speaker, was our tambo. Ukteta kuzala ukunyukteta. And ubutoki abutibani ninyanis. Eh, 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 eh. We are I'm members. Going to say, Chair, I'm going to you say, Chair. You are too deep. You are too deep. And I'm, I'm, if you mislead, you, you then the chairperson can hear you. <laughs> it's fine, Chair. I don't know how I'll, the I'll, chairperson is going to direct this meeting. I will help you, Chair. What I'm saying, what, what I'm saying, Chair, but is... Be mindful, we are also on virtual platform, save time, ne? I know, Chair. What I'm yes. saying, Chair, is I want to caution the Speaker of Wartambo District Municipality that lies and truth do not mix in the same way as water and paraffin. You see, Chair, we, we might be having a one-sided information as members of the committee. But the leaders in the determinist party have a responsibility to either counter or give us additional information in so far as the issues at hand are concerned. For instance, Chair, the speaker claims and I dare say he misleads your committee that the mayor was incapacitated. Now, I know you are a very well-learned person. If you go to check what incapacitation means, it means somebody who cannot think, somebody who cannot operate, somebody who cannot do anything out of his out of his or her own for the speaker to suggest and the chief for that matter that the mayor was incapacitated and therefore they convened a meeting 
that you have been diagnosed as COVID positive, surely that does not render you incapacitated. The mayor was at his home operating and yeah, home. Give, at, from, from home, chair. And I am reliably informed by my caucus chairperson, Councillor Mabasa, that the mayor convened not only one, but even two mayoral committees from his home. And therefore, is it a his or a honorable Nana? No, the mayor is a he is, is a she. But and why uh, are you calling a he now? I'm sorry. I'm 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 sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There is the consequence of the essay. I'm sorry. <laughs> consequence of the essay. Please no 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 chair. No no no. The point I'm trying to say chair is that the. The mayor was well alive at home. The fact that she was diagnosed as, a, as, 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 as COVID positive never rendered the mayor incapacitated. But the truth is, the speaker and the chief whip thought it was an opportunity for them to use to bypass the mayor and convene a council meeting which ended up on their own accord. They then decided to nullify a council meeting in which they, sub, they, they presented a report. In that council meeting, they then, they then took all sorts of decisions, Chair, much, much to the objection of the DA. But seven days later, Sanity prevailed on both the speaker and the chief whip. They then, they then reconvened another council meeting to suspend the municipal manager. Now, I have, a que I have a direct question to the speaker, Chair. Speaker, who wrote the appointment letter to suspend the municipal manager? That's the first question. The second question is, who wrote the appointment letter to appoint the acting MM? Because you will all recall, all of these uh, check, all of these events revolve around the 17th of July. I want, I want to get a response from from the speaker in this regard, chair. Without really chair. Uh, me messing, messing your, your program around. I've got one or two other issues that I would want to raise. And then, and, and, and Chair, if, if you listen to... Matters that has to deal with the speaker and allow the others to finish. Say again, speaker, Chair? Can we allow the other members that has issues with the speaker to finish? Is the other matters related to what the speaker has said or not? Okay, awesome. It's fine. It's fine. I will. I will. I will. I will then. Mm. I will then. It's fine, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Mm. Honorable Kaiser. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I'm in the car because of that. Uh, that which I have reported. Uh, I apologize on that. Uh, the, load, the load shedding still persists. Uh, secondly, I would like to apologize about the emotions. I didn't mean to chastise the honorable members. But nevertheless, Chair, I want to ask a question uh, with regards to a uh, now a, a meeting, uh, a sitting in, in, in council on, that was supposed to sit on the, on the 22nd of June 2020. Uh, mm. If that if it was it, if it was thoroughly and 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 properly constituted constituted and success and a successful meeting, uh, what? Why was the disciplinary action against the municipal manager not instituted? Thank you, chair. In yes. that meeting. Okay. Then Honorable Tou. Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my question will be on the, firstly, you, your presentation stated clearly that you have received 888 water tanks and only 785 were installed. Michael, can you, okay. Is it possible to put your camera on, Michael? No, we are having a, 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 a electricity problem around social Google. Oh, you were initially confused with Mom Kize, but it's fine. It's you now. Proceed. Yes. That uh, firstly, your presentation stated clearly that you have received 888 water tanks and only 785 were installed. And you are left with 113 water tanks. Then, well, then uh, also you mentioned that the water tanks were put in certain council's house. There were no water tanks. Share with us of how are you going to deal with this issue? Because say, during this issue, uh, we don't expect people should run short of water. Then the second question is in relation to the suspension of the municipal manager. The issue was about 168 million that he can't account for. And then we have mentioned that we have conducted an investigation on this issue. Can you please just share with us what was your outcome uh, investigation of how did the, the 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 municipal manager unfold uh, the 168 million? I thank you. Uh, Matlow, thank you so much. Uh, mute your mic, Matlow. Then we go to the next uh, person. It's Honorable Kurnevald. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, yes, there's, there's a lot of emotion going around, um, and we almost like a car driving on a road map with a navigator that cannot navigate. Um, and this kind of suggestion might be premature, but I want to ask the committee if we can ask the municipality to give a portfolio of evidence of all correspondence and reports and investigations that has been done. We're going to talk a long time tonight um, between who's doing, doing what and so forth. But I think if we can have something on writing, it will assist the committee firstly. And then in terms of contracts, um, can we have that signed contracts that has been well, for, for all procurements um, and all the different contracts that has been spoken about? Can we actually have that in writing and see who signed for it and who's responsible for it? Because that is where the authority starts um, so that we can trace it. Thank you, Chair. I think that's assisting us in the way forward. Yes, yes we are only yeah. left with two speakers. I hope the two speakers that we are left with also will assist us on that way forward. Also, because I'm looking also at the time now, the parliament and parliamentary staff, we must think about that of them as well. Honorable Mam Kize. The <clears throat> You must also speak on the proposal raised by Honorable uh, Horner Valtine. Yes, Chair. Submission of all these documents in relation to the questions of members in writing. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, mine, it was very simple and straightforward, Chair. I, mm. just, I, I was just asking the municipality about their plans. As we were talking about the plans of COVID-19 in their municipality to say, can they be specific to us in which areas that they are targeting to prioritize them with their plans of COVID-19? And I ask to the municipality about the poor communities which is empty and devoted to say 
the they are catered for in those priorities but i didn't get any response on that chair i'm also chair to the municipality about the church of tanks and water tankers that is those daughter tank will be full filled with water inside if they are already distributed because usually the municip some municipalities they put church or tank within the community which is not fulfilling water so that the community will be using those water thank you chair Much, uh, ma'am, honorable uh, Kaba. Honorable Adewe, it's your turn also assist us on the way forward as proposed by Honorable Hunevald. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, it is clear and evident that it's going to be to and from. I therefore like to propose the following way forward that indeed we need all the records of the meeting that took place on the 17th of May 2020. In those records, it should include the following, all the reports that were meant to be tabled by the mayor, and those reports obviously would have been signed by the mayor. And the mayor ought to verify that indeed those reports as presented by the deputy mayor are an authentic report of what was meant to be presented by her. Second to that, a detailed procedural uh, 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 sequence of event that led to the suspension of the deputy mayor. We need that in, in writing. And I'm sure as the biggest district municipality uh, uh, in the Eastern Cape, you have resources, uh, uh, means in place to record all your meetings. So that which we are requesting shouldn't be difficult, Chair. Uh, uh, and then we will be able to get to the bottom of this matter. Otherwise, we won't be able to do justice uh, in, in, in this meeting. Uh, including all these issues uh, 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 that they are informing us about, uh, that the uh, the case was subsequently withdrawn, that should be in black and white. Any appropriate delegation, if it's not in black and white, it's not there, uh, it's hearsay. So that, that's my proposed way forward, Honorable Chair, so that we don't waste too much time on, on, on this matter and further bore uh, the, the committee with my word against yours. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, hi, Chair. Who's saying hi, Chair? It's Mlindi Nana. I, 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 I got cut off, Chair. I wouldn't know whether you had asked, you had solicited my opinion no, earlier. No, there's a, there's a proposal, uh, Honorable uh, Nana, by members yes, sir. of the committee. Yes, sir. Yes, that also makes your further submissions to fall off because now we are dealing with the proposals with it. There's got the majority support to say no problem, if, sure. if we are to proceed, it's going to be back and forth as it's mm -hmm. happening now. Mm -hmm. Then there's a proposal that all the affected parties must submit their response to members in writing. That will include the That will also include and the chief whip who have not yet spoken, and the other two MMCs, uh, the member of the finance committee and the MPEG chairperson. Yes, sure. To then submit all their issues. You they've heard the members the what they've raised. And yes, they sure. Will give us all their submission in relation to this matter in writing. And Honorable Colonel is also put it. Can you mute your mic, Honorable Nana? Oh, sorry, sir, sorry, sorry. Yeah, and then the Honorable Colonel Vard is also, and also Chief Whip, can you mute your mic? I see you are angry with me that you have not yet No, thank you very much. Mute your mic. 
So yeah. uh, we are trying to to propose a way forward that is favorable to everybody. And then also mindful, that we some of us have been in meetings since 9:30, virtual meetings. The colleagues who started with us, uh, 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 we have been in meetings since 9:30 up to now. So the issue that we are trying to raise for us to, and we are prepared. I think that's the commitment of the committee to say we are going to deal with this district municipalities until sanity prevails and our people are able to receive their services. We are all in agreement as a committee. And then there's a lot of stake that includes also the mayor to do the breakdown and everybody involved on the 1.4 billion irregular expenditure ex explained by the AG. So on this matter of the MM and the COVID-19 thing, so everybody, all of you whom we have invited here, it's you, executive mayor, deputy mayor, a, a chief whip speaker, a, a, who else, MMC finance, chairperson of MPEC. You need to all submit separate reports to, with regard to all these issues. Give it to members that they will be having ample opportunity to go through that and consolidate their um, observation on the matter. Then we are still going to reconvene you. If, in fact, what we need to do, we have an oversight program that was already approved. And uh, I think we should then just see how best if we have dealt with the other cities and everybody, then we'll come and also do some site visit to all these projects that are mentioned to be their major uh, uh, consumption of your budget, yeah, whereas there's no service to the people. So that's basically what we're trying to say as a proposed way forward, because the way things are, are, each and every one, when they talk, they probe more questions. They probe more agitation from members, such that then we, we won't finish this meeting. I think there's consensus on the side of the of the of the, of the, the committee members. MM, you must submit okay. your side of vision, or, or your, your your vision also in writing on the circumstances surrounding your suspension because it's clear in the public domain that you were suspended for refusing to sign this 4.3 million and 1.8 million type of invoices. That is clear, and then also. There's a counter allegation that you were suspended for some irregularities. The reality that the AG has raised earlier in the morning, there's an alarming over 1.4 billion of irregular expenditure in the municipality. And then also the MPEC chairperson must be able to tell us whether these committees are functional or you are just there to rubber stamp whatever way is. Are you doing your job? What are you supposed to do? So. This, we're trying to do this in a way to come to the conclusion for this meeting. And a non-member of the committee like Honorable Nana will still uh, want to see you in this meeting as we discuss these matters so that you can assist this committee because uh, there was something that was raised earlier by the AG that is also to an indictment to us as a committee and then as provincial committees at COCTA, because I want to also ask what are they doing at that level? There's also a, a, a scopus in provinces. What are they actually doing in terms of oversight to this municipality? So it's a whole lot of things that we feel we need to get at the bottom of this as a committee. So I'm trying to raise it so that we all agree that's how far we can go today and there's a lot, a can of worms that has been opened now where we are seated. There's more things that needs us to probe this matter. And I can assure you we are going to prioritize this matter so that we deal with it and give it the necessary attention. Maybe it will also serve as an example to other uh, municipalities that might be watching this us today to say, hey, if you mess up with the public press, you know there's a hell. And we know also there are also processes that the province is doing. We are going to also invite the SIU if indeed that proclamation is done. And I know I'm also this COCTA, the investigations that COCTA National is doing. 
So the message to the, I said the DG and the DM is here. They must also give us their view and the preliminary report on what they've been doing because matters of um, OR Tambo backdate from previous financial year, it's not something new that is happening now. This has been there. That's what the AG is raising as a concern as well. So we like every sector, uh, uh, the department, DUCOC, Tambo for C, DG, you are here for you to also give us an analysis and a preview. I know the anti-corruption unit has had two cases in this municipality. They must also come and brief us on the status of all those cases. So it's a whole lot of things. But the message that we, 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 we are sending home to the leadership of the municipality, and we can see you are also highly divided. As uh, Honorable Nana says, uh, there's a cabal, though the chief, the, the speaker disputed that you can see that you are working parallels there. It's a clear evident the way you are talking, where others are not even owning the other report, they are coming with the other story. So we are pleading with you as role players in this municipality to all respond to the questions as raised by the members in writing. And I'm giving all of you up to today's Friday, up to Tuesday next week, to have submitted all your, your written submissions, all of you. I'm repeating the executive mayor, the deputy executive mayor, the speaker, the chief whip, the MMC finance, chairperson MPEC, a CFO, 18 MM and MM submissions from all your side. So it will also help us to have a structured engagement because it will be based on what you have written yourselves. I think that then colleagues, I think well, that's yes, the to sum up well, this well, meeting well. and for us to close this meeting, unless if in my summary I've omitted something, I will yeah. only allow additions from you on what their submission must entail. Yes, Yes, Chair. Oh, I'd like to add, yes. Yes, Chair. To add that, we mm. need to also get the submission from the MEC of local government because, in terms of a regulation six sub regulation five B, uh, within seven days after the suspension, they must notify the MEC. We need to get the report whether the MEC was notified and what was the outcome in terms of that notification to the MEC in terms of the suspension uh, uh, of the 17th of May, meaning before the 24th of May, the MEC ought to have been... Oh. 17th of June, 17th of June. Yes, 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 my, my bad, my bad, yes. 17th the... of June, honorable at the shop. Yes. Chairperson, thanks. I, I think we must just be clear that it mustn't just be a report as we usually get. It must be a report with included a POE, a proof of evidence of all communication, investigations and reports that they receive. Um, I want to see those reports before me because so, so that we can be all on the same page. Please, Chair. Yes. The mayor of so many investigations that she's doing. We want that portfolio of evidence as well. Uh, is it honorable? Chair. Sure. It's manager. It's calling the it's manager. Yes, it's can manager. I allow the committee members? I've noted you can allow the committee members if there's any who wants to okay. say something, I'll come to you. I have okay, a sure. okay. Hussein. Honorable Hussein. Yeah, uh, Chair, uh, just so that for the record and we don't lose it. The mayor did undertake to provide us with a full detailed breakdown of the expenditure, the COVID-19 expenditure, what they spent the money on and the exact details. How, how many of yes. the, the PPEs and how many uh, sanitizing booths and so on. So she must please send that information as well. Okay. The mayor, you heard that. Who's calling the chair? Is Mkalipi. Honorable Mkalipi. Addition, Chair, they mentioned that there were criminal cases that were opened. We need those uh, evidence of criminal cases so that as this portfolio committee, we can make a follow-up on ourselves as well on the criminal cases they have opened. We need that information. We said we need an information pertaining who are the owners of those trunk of our truck waters. 
we need to know who owned those truck who are also used to, to, to take the waters to water tanks. We need a, a profile of that Patilizwe uh, trading institution. And we said to the mayor, because uh, one of her tasks is to make sure that the public participation program is coordinated in her office or whoever who's coordinating the public pro uh, participation program must tell us why did they opt to give one particular company instead of capacitating people from this or tambo and the municipality to hire people in order to benefit if there is finance thank you chair okay thank you very much it's yes. 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 Yes, Chairperson. Can the mayor also provide the committee with the comprehension in terms of the food support and social uh, security? Because there's no food in the presentation, Chairperson. Uh, okay. there, there's, there's no mention of food there as to how 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 it was distributed. Mm. There's nothing there, Chair, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh... Are members of the community and eh, done? No, I've noted you, Nana. I'm trying to, Thank you, to know you first prioritize committee members. I've put yeah. you out. Hi, Hi, you. That's why you're gonna be last. I've noted Hi, you, Chair. Madam. I allow members of the committee <coughs> first. Chairperson, is Baba. Yes. yes sir. We also chair. We need uh, to the executive a, a, a written in black and white about the area the, that area of poor people of Mpindwe. We don't care whether they are 19 or they are 14, but what we need people they must get a, a, a service delivery equally with with those who are. What is the 100. name of the area for the secretary? The name of the area. Is the Mpindweni Enyandeni Libote? So we need that area. Libote. Enyandeni Mpindweni Libote. So we need that things, a service delivery to be equal to all of the people of South, of South Africa or Eastern Cape, as much as they are 19 households, but they deserve. A proper service Yes, thank you. You've met, Matlow, you are covered. Matlow, are you covered? Oh, not yet. Uh, but uh, Chairperson, I wanted to say they should also put in their report the homeless uh, place for the homeless people. Shelter. Uh, okay. Yes, the shelters and also the quarantine, uh, quarantine uh, site. And then, yes, yes. Okay. Honorable Nana. Thanks, thanks, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, I, I know some of the issues I've raised, but I would really, with your with your indulgence, I would really want to belabor them. Chair, some of not the critical... Now. <laughs> not it's fine, now. Chair. It's okay. It's, not now. It's okay, Chair. I'll have to it, suppress you. It's fine, Chair. You chair, are there, you are also doing oversight. Yes, if Chair. You want, I thought you were going to add and to make statements. Yeah, you add I'm, in the list. I will agree. But if you want to belabor with due respect to my colleague... I'll have to suppress you. Now I want to add you. You are then that constituency. That's the, those are the matters that you can still raise with them. I want to check. I want to add. Yes. Thank Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Chair. Yes. Chair, the one issue is as the committees of parliament, we we need to be appraised by the mayor as to whether she was indeed incapacitated because I think that point has been made honorable member it, it's fine the, 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 sec, the second issue chair please can you be 
patient with me. The second issue, Chair, is is uh, is is what I I asked about. Who wrote the suspension letter of the municipal manager? We said and second, that case as well. What and secondly, and secondly, because because Chair, these are critically important. And okay. secondly, who wrote the appointment letter for the current? municipal manager given the fact that we have the 17th of july as our date is our date honorable nana honorable nana sure. i think the time you were cut those are the issues that we said they must be packaged Thank you very and much, we sure. mentioned people with the responsibilities colleagues you have made Thanks, your sure. questions can we then adjourn this meeting Shirin, you'll prioritize on the program so that we, after we've received these documents, when are we reconvening? Also look at the possibility of the oversight because certain things will have to also go down and see them myself, ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's it. We'll discuss it uh, in committee colleagues on this matter. Then, yeah, on the proposed way forward. But I should thank all of you. MMC Finance. Chairperson of MPEG, I know you wanted to say something. But that time, can you first produce whatever you want to, to say in writing? Then we'll, the committee members will go through this, will reconvene so that we need to deal with this matter holistically. As we said, we have to deal with it. It's our baby. And then we need to just deal with this elephant meat that we are going to eat until we finish it, if it's an elephant. Can we then, colleagues, it's a Friday evening. Can I urge all of you to remain safe as we adjourn this meeting <laughs> so that when we reconvene on Tuesday, <laughs> we are all fresh. Oh, thank, thank, you you day. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chair. It's Friday evening, Chair. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> thank you. You are a star, Chair. You are a star. You are we a celebrity star. Yeah, you are still in the lockdown mode. Uti ni mama. That's why I am surprised. Uti ni mama. So we are still in the lockdown. Maybe we are not home. <laughs> we are still in the lockdown. Yes. Yes. So Friday is the same, Saturday is the same. So I don't know why they are so excited. However, <laughs> <laughs> Watu upegi basma mbere nzom usma mbere nzom lumaspala wa kushanga kushanga kati tamu angali loma na spona sinje kushanga kati tamu angali loma na spona sinje Thank you, 